Pan-Africanism and what goes on in Africa. And the Pan-Africanist always comes in our mix trying to shame us into upholding a false Pan-Africanist narrative that they're not holding up over there. Nobody over there is really trying to link up with us in real numbers unless there's a scam. And again, we've been pointing out all of the scams that's been going on when brothers and sisters go over there to Ghana, when they had that, oh, everybody come on the year of return, y'all come on over here. And family, there's video after video after video after video of black people going over to Ghana and getting the the scams, scams, scams put on them. They're getting scammed left and right. And that's just the reality. That's nobody hating. This, you, you can look at the videos. People are going over there, they're buying property, spending thousands of dollars. The land is getting finessed from them. That, that's why they wanted us over there so that we can be fresh scam meat. And that's the long and short of it. Let's keep it a buck. Because my thing is, if I see my folks getting scammed, I'm not going to sell you no dream, man. I'm not going to sit up here um, trying to be the, the king of Wakanda and all that old bullshit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. And and I've been over there. I've been to some of those African nations, and, I, and I've talked to them. And truth be told, they're not really trying to um, have us come over for real, for real, and build with, like, dual citizenship. Because, look, I've, I've been all around putting that dual citizenship bug in their ear. They're just not biting. And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, they ain't really trying to, to build like that. Unless we can come over there with a bag, that's all they're interested in. And that's not pan-Africanism. That's scamming. It's not our duty to sit up there and be scammed by folks. You dig? That's the long and short of it. And we're not trying to denigrate nobody. But don't let these so-called pan-Africanists come in the rooms and try to shame us into not upholding a, a false, non-existent, pan-Africanist ideology that nobody else is upholding. I would like some, some pan-Africanists to call up to prove me wrong. Show us what some pan-Africanist organizations actually got going on that's thriving and successful. You understand? Let us know. Now let's get some of these calls in here. Let's get um let's get some calls in here. Let's get um E Thang. E Thang, you ready? All right. So let's get ethnic in here. Oh, I am ready to read my bad. Okay. My bad. Go ahead, E Thang. Go ahead. So, so I wanted to pose this question, right? And I kinda wanna ask you this story. So wouldn't true pan Africanism be um telling the Aromo tribe to stop genocide in this tribe or telling this tribe to stop genocide in that tribe and true Afri true pan-africanism is uniting the, the uh african continent from top exactly to not telling exactly. us what the fuck we need to be doing sorry Tariq, or what we should be doing and who we should be united with exactly it, it, that's the thing they only bring that to us by the way you never say that to all of them damn tribes over there you're not pan-africanizing none of them my thing is the answer to your Pan-African is to start with the tribes first. Start with all of those gazillion tribes banging each other in the head. Start with them first and then holler at us. When y'all get it together, come show us the Pan-African package. They don't go to the Caribbean telling them, y'all need to be Pan-Africanists. We all got to link up. Yeah. No, you don't do that to them. But a lot of, see, here's the thing. A lot of the Pan-Africanists are actually here. The pan people who talk about pan Africanism and these pan African organizations, they're here. We got to ask some real questions, family. If you have these pan African groups always in our mix, they ain't never got nothing going on in Africa. What the hell is their purpose? Because people don't do things just to be doing them. You understand? I'm telling you, a lot of these pan Africanist groups and organizations and people are people who are operatives for the FBI and the CIA. We better be very clear about that. We better understand how the op game is real. There's some real ops out there. And when you have people who come in our mix and with these Pan-Africanists, the only thing they do is come among us and try to disrupt things. Do you notice that? 
the only thing they do is come around us trying to disrupt any momentum we got. If we try to get something going on with reparations, their job is to come around here and try to disrupt the energy and talk about some non-existent pan-Africanism that they got going on that ain't nowhere to be seen. Let's get Ethnic in here. Oh, hello, sir. What's up, Ethnic? Hey, um, I just want to say, firstly, I'm a massive fan of yours. Uh, have been for years, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, we have, we have a bit in common. Like what? Well, I actually hail from Detroit, despite my speaking pattern. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, wait, 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 no, no. Where'd you go? Where did you live before you lived in Detroit? Um, Jamaica. Jamaica, there you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. But, um, but I've got, like... Um, my mother ha comes from Bessemer, Alabama. Okay. So, so, and our family actually, uh, original name was. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Your mother came from Bessemer, Alabama. Yeah, she came from Bessemer, Alabama. Oh, because then why? Okay, she is she Jamaican? No, she's American actually. Okay, where'd you get an accent? Because you 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 get your accent from your mother generally. So why why are you talking with Jamaican? Well, not even Jamaican. You have a British accent. So yeah, I, I grew up. I grew up in London a long time ago. Okay, but you all over the place. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually quite old too. I'm. I'm like fifty something years old. So, um, and you know, I've lived in Detroit, and I've lived in London, and I've lived in Singapore, China, visited most of Northern Africa, popped down to South Africa, you know, bumped mm -hmm. down to Asia, EMA, the whole EMEA thing. So, you know, and, and I went to went to you know school in Boston. And I wrote this little um, thesis a um, long time ago. I'll just, you know, I won't spend, take up too much of your time. I'll just kind of get quick into, you can look at my Twitter, kind of like well, X, whatever it is, and dig deeper into this whole thesis concept that I've been just fucking around with over the years. Um, it, it was called Ethnic Assets, and then I actually published it. Well, now, what's this? What's the ethnic assets about? What's what's the thesis about? Yeah, like I, as a, as a, well, like I said, I don't want to like distract from your your Pan Africanist uh, theme here, but well, ethnic assets is more conceptual. Um, I, it's complements, hopefully, complements what you're doing. I think you're on the right track. To be honest, I think what you're doing is not unlike what Ken Ken Hendry is doing. In London, you may have heard of this guy. He wrote a book called um, uh, "It's Like the Disease of Whiteness." I mean, it's just really, he just really goes in on whites and the whole colonialism and of uh, of the Caribbean and Africa and Americas. Really, it's Ken Hindi. Uh, God, that's the same. Name. Okay, get get your thoughts together, brother. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to. I try to give you a chance, but you're just babbling, bro. Get your thoughts together. All right. If y'all call up, get your thoughts together. Because I try to give you a chance. You know, if you say something interesting or sound like it might be interesting, all right, I'll give you a shot. But you, you just can't get up here and babble. All right, you're just babbling. All right. And if I'm getting bored, my audience is getting bored. All right, I got to think about the audience. They don't want to hear that. I feel my audience. I feel them. They feel me. And I don't want to bore them with, with babble. So I, I, I got this, um, it's called Ethnic Assets, and um, hello, um, Pip Pip, and, um, and, and it's sort of like Kinji, um, have, you, have, you, have you heard of him? Uh, yes, it was something something along the lines of, uh, hold on, let me get a spot of tea, um, oh, yeah, yummy, but listen, I am something along the lines of this, I want to um, elaborate on the, uh, something similar to Cornel West and... Uh, De Grassi, people of that nature. Well, you just kind of like to hear your goddamn self talk, man. You come on, bro. You you kind of like to hear yourself talk. You know, flesh your stuff out, brother. Flesh it out, man. Get it together. Get that Peppa Pig shit up out of here. All right. Now let's get Arthur in here. Arthur, what's up, man? 
How you doing, Tariq? Uh, Hello, how are you, sir? I'm just drinking, <laughs> eating an English muffin, reading some Maya Angelou. <laughs> <laughs> you know you missed your calling as a stand-up comedian. You know that, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> two things. The first one, real quick. I, uh, I'm in Chicago. I just... I went to see Microphone Check. Excellent work, brother. Excellent. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, okay. Second thing, to your point about Pan-Africanists being disruptive, the prime examples of those are NARC and COBRA and First Repair. Yes. Who are contractors to the Democratic Party and whose sole purpose is to keep reparations an issue, not an accomplishment. Right. Right, man. And and I, I remember doing a lecture in Boston years ago and some in Cobra people came up there and they were trying to g- give me pamphlets and try, oh yeah, at Cobra, man, we got a lot of good things going. They came up to one of my lectures trying to sell me on the in Cobra stuff. And I'm like, all right, y'all ain't really, I'm looking at their pamphlets and it was all about, well, reparations ain't all about some money. It's all about um, um, repatriation? I said, oh, hell no. Repatriation? Hell no. Sending us back to the motherland? A nigga, please. They are, they immediately turned me off. So yeah, man, we, we got to watch these groups that come around with this stuff. We got to watch them, man. Let's get um, Burn It Turn. Burn It Turn. And then we'll get um, XL. Burn a turn and XL. Burn a turn first. Burn. Hop on, brother. It's your turn. All right. Hey, Tariq. It's, up, I'm bro? sorry. Uh, it's burn it earn. But uh, yeah. Um, I just want to let you know, bro. I've been, I've been, I've been following you for a minute, bro. I, I, I went back to school in like a 2014. I seen the first hidden colors in a classroom, and ever since then, it just changed my life. Yeah. Um. What I wanted to talk to you about, oh, I was going to let you know, so you know who I am. I'm the dude that was at the uh, L.A. premiere for the uh, microphone check, and I sitting on your same aisle, and you kicked over my soda. Oh, are you the big dude? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, my bad, brother. I, yeah, my I want my $5, too. Nah, <laughs> <fuck with you. laughs> you, you. You with your lady, weren't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's your queen doing, man? Oh, she's doing good. She's doing good. She, she's at work right now, but yes. she enjoyed the movie as well. Yes, indeed. I kicked over this brother's soda by mistake, and he paid. He was like, "Oh man, ain't no big deal." But he looked thirsty. He's a big brother. He looked like, "God damn it, I gotta wash this popcorn down." And Tariq fucked me up. Oh no, they have free <laughs> refills, so it was gravy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So how what's um, going on, brother? Uh, so what I wanted, to, I seen the topic of the the of the space. This is my first time in Twitter space. I'm just learning how to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? I, but uh, I seen the topic and um. First thing I thought of, the only thing that they really mattered, um, that they really managed to do was just water down our movement. You know what I mean? Yeah. They come over here and then they 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 claim to be part of us, but then they kind of vote against us. Yeah. I kind of learned this when I was working in a boys group home. And, you know, in boys group homes, they have a lot of African people that work there. Um, and I was just talking politics with one of them. And I was just like, man, it hit me like you guys are so far from our actual politics and the way that we move is just crazy. You know what I mean? It's yeah. How they can look so much like us, but not actually be us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yes, indeed, man. I feel you. Thank you so much. Speaking of, speak, he reminded me of something. Y'all remember the other day I had that um that tether nurse that, um hold on, hold on, hold on, Nate. that um tether nurse, that Sudanese chick. She was from South Sudan, I think. And she was a nurse in Arizona. Um. Yeah, I think people found her identity They because she tried to hide who she was after we did the broadcast because she's a nurse, but she was talking real greasy about Foundation of Black Americans. Talking about, yeah, I got to take care of y'all. Y'all be all fat and all them chemicals y'all be eating. So she was talking real greasy about Foundation of Black Americans, yet she's a nurse and she's in charge of taking care of sickly Foundation of Black Americans. So a lot of people were like, hey, man, we need to see who this woman is and, and kind of report her ass. And some of y'all actually found her little old musty self. Um, I need to post that information up because people kind of found out who she was. And I think they found out she'd been arrested before. They they pulled up her whole, 
her whole little tether rap sheet. But yeah, that's a dangerous thing, man. We got to understand a lot of these tethers work in the medical industry. You know, a lot of them tethers be getting them fake nursing degrees. So they be scamming their way into the, the medical field and the nursing field. And they bring that vitriol with them. And then they end up being in charge of watching over sick foundational black Americans and family. I've heard horror stories about these folks beating up on patients, doing real weird stuff. You understand? So we got to keep our eyes and ears open, man. Us kind of looking at how these tethers roll. That's not us being xenophobic. That's us being very cautious because we look at folks and think, oh, he, they black like me. They're going to be on code like me. We don't understand how some of these tethers identify with the white supremacists and they'll do real devious stuff behind our backs. We don't really understand how deep that thing is. Let's get, um, let's get Danielle and then we'll get Nate. Danielle. Thank you. Um, I really want to unpack this for all of us. When you, uh, the minute we all got on the boats, we were written off and you could tell by the way that how no one came looking for us. I don't think any, not one boat from Africa on our behalf came looking. We were written off. So now mm-hmm. just imagine when we were, you know, under pressure, like we are under the pressure of <laughs> white supremacy, you can't help but become a diamond. Now that the, the coal has been cracked open and the diamonds have shone through. They, because they made a deal with white supremacy on top of white supremacy, making that deal with them. Can you imagine how cheated they feel when they made a deal with white supremacy that they would have a safe place under it? And yet, and still, we're the ones who came out from the belly of the beast with all of this. And we're doing things that have exceeded everybody's expectations. So what does that come up as? It comes up as cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. And now that you have cognitive dissonance on top of being a professional victim, a professional victim is someone who blames others for what they did to themselves. So they held on to a belief that we were in fear, and now that we are proving otherwise to their belief, now they have themselves to feel well, the white supremacist tab. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. I land. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Yeah, you you were cooking. It was just a uh, the white supremacist popped up here making flushing sounds and all that. His, his um, he had moved his thong around and his bussy was queefing. That's all that was. That's all that was. A little bussy queef. All right, let's get Nate. Nate in the building. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, Nate? Hey, Tariq, how you doing, brother? Uh, long time listener, long time fan. Uh, you put me on the consciousness back when uh, I saw the first Hidden Colors, uh, maybe 12 years ago. Oh, yeah. So uh, I've always been a fan, and man, I've been putting other people on it. I, I, every every movie that you, you that you drop, I have people come over, and we watch, We have a, like a, a, a watch party. You know, we, we put on a big screen, and we got the, the family and people on the block, and I got I got a lot of people that's that's you know that's that's up on your movement and up on your your work and everything. But I wanted to say um, I'm, I'm from Chicago um, and I was out there at the premiere with uh, I saw Afro Elite and everything. Oh yeah. And um, it was crazy because when I first came in at the beginning, it was some uh, some of them folks and some uh, some uh, I want to say Latinos, but you know they was in there and they were down more in the front row and everything. And I guess we had more of a presence, uh, you know, the FBAs was coming in. So they they stood on the side and then they said, oh, we must be in the wrong movie because this 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 ain't what we came to see. I said, mm-hmm. oh, so I'm kind of seeing the vitriol. Like y'all knew the movie theater y'all was coming in, but y'all had thought it was, we weren't going to be up there like that. It kind of seemed like that. So mm-hmm. it, 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 yeah, it, it is what it is, though. They, they they cleared out early, and we had a ball. We had a blast. It was off the chain. Uh, yeah. Man, great work, great film. I think I think you can get it. I think you can get it nominated for an Oscar. Uh, for yeah. Um, yeah. Oscar. For, yeah, Oscar. Yeah. Man, because it's one of the best documentaries that, that came out in a long time. It's factual, and it's on one of the biggest subjects in the world right now, which is hip-hop. 
And yeah. we are the founders and co-creators. FBA all day. I rock with you. You got mad support, mad love from Chicago to Milwaukee. So keep doing your thing, brother. And I'm Thank right so back. Much. Yeah, man, Chicago really showed out heavy. They showed up and showed out heavy for the film, man. And people loved it, man. Just rave reviews for the film all the way across. If you have not seen Microphone Check, you really got to treat yourself, man. And we're really, we're going to really push for this thing to be Oscar nominated because it is, it's that good. People really love it, man. Just the reviews are just top notch, even from the media. Um, Cause we invited the media to the New York one and um, the media, man, they've been raving over it. And I'm talking about the mainstream media. And you know, what's interesting, man, um, a lot of the hip hop radio, the corporate hip hop radio, they're still somewhat quiet about it. I want y'all to understand the corporate hip hop radio. They're still kind of quiet about it, which is very interesting because these corporate hip hop radio entities that set up here and let folks lie about the history. They had no problem platforming the lies. Now that the truth is out there on a big screen and big technicolor, now they want to get quiet about it. Interesting. Prophet, go ahead, brother. Hey, what's going on, bro? How you? I'm good. What's going on, Prophet? Doing good, man. Uh, I'm here in Atlanta. I wanted to say uh, congratulations on the success of Microphone Check. I was at work. I didn't get to check it out, but I'm ready for that thing to uh, come out on streaming. Um, as far as, like, kind of on topic, um, I'm curious as to why... Well, a few things. I want I want our people to continue to dive into their they lineage and their history because the a lot of people are breaking down that slave trade theory. And, you know, some people did come on ships, but I think that is, you know, aggrandized to an extent. I don't think it's as much as, as people would people would seem. I don't think we right. all came over here on ships and things of that nature. Um, but my other thing is, why are people from the diaspora or, you know, mostly Africa, why do they feel like so much like we need to get black why why is it so much bitch we all toward black americans why you black americans are african why don't they give that same energy towards jamaicans caribbeans um brazilians well you know brazilian has brazil has like the second largest black population in in the world next to africa why are these people aren't going to other black populations and telling them that they're african why is it always you black americans are ashamed of your lineage they don't give that smoke to anybody else why is that exactly that's a very good question because you never have them go to Jamaicans and say you're supposed to say you're Afro Jamaican. Yeah, they don't. They don't do that. You're supposed to be Afro Haitian. You're supposed to be. It's only us because we're the ones. We have been the global icons. We've been the ones that will change and shift cultures multiple times over. We are the progenitors of so many different trends and accomplishments and cultures. No group of Black people has accomplished and built more than foundational Black Americans. Even John Henry Clark said this. So it's very important for them to tether onto us. See, us claiming them is them tethering onto us. Seven God, what's up, man? Yeah, what's up, sir? How you doing? I'm good. What's on your mind? They got a lot of noise over there. What's on your mind? You were saying, talking something about... Um, Africans coming, um, FPH. Uh, do yes. you have any? But that's a lie. That that's wrong. How come? Are you saying that not wrong? That y'all not scamming us when we go over there? Uh, probably when you're trying to uh, buy lands over here, maybe you're going through the wrong source, or you're going through the back door. If you go through the government, or if you go through um, the Ministry of Lands and Urban Development, I don't think you get scammed. Really? So everybody, so all these dozens of black people who go over there, they're lying about being scammed? Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Are you saying that all of the black people who are making videos just by the dozens saying that they're going over there to different African nations and getting scammed, you think that they're all lying? Yeah, because this... Um accusation you you put in is, is a very um disastrous okay, so why, aggravation why, because why would dozens of people, why would dozens of people who don't know each other lie why would they lie because you're trying to say the government of these countries these african countries are the ones scamming you because they're they're the rightful ones to um sell you land so are you trying to say the government is coming you not me because i'm not going over there 
but several other people are claiming that they're being scammed over there. You and you're saying they're all lying. So why are they lying? They're they're being scammed because they're not going through the right source. They're going through the back what, door. What, and right? Maybe they say they're... because some of these people are going through the government agencies, and when they're getting their land confiscated, the government there ain't doing nothing to stop it. So they're complicit, sir. Well, I've not seen anybody testify about that. Uh, going to the government, the, the government can the government cannot scam you because if the government yeah. does such, you can um, sue the government. The government will never do such a thing, sir. So you got police over there who's a part of the government that's always forcing people to give them bribes. What do you? No, 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 that's that's a normal thing for police worldwide. Police are. No, for that one, right? but I'm talking about the government. No, the, no, no, no. Higher no, authority. No, that is not normal worldwide. See how these tethers think? They think everybody's supposed to be damn scamming. No, police here in the U.S. don't walk up to people and say, hey, give me, give me $100 and I'll let you go. They don't do that here. No, they don't do that in Britain, sir. No. Everybody don't have this dusty, musty, scamming mentality sir what are you talking about? Uh, okay well what about what about what lord boy these tethers what what about what man no anyway I, I'm, I'm tired of this lying tether i don't want to hear no more lies i'm sorry guys that's okay i i, I don't want to hear no more lying tether let's get brother sage in the building sage 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 let's show light brother peace to the family brother how's everything going with you I'm good, man. What's on your mind, bro? I'm chilling, brother. Yo, um, how did that empanada mama digest in your system? You good? I was worried about you that night. I ain't gonna it was lie, brother. actually pretty good. It was actually pretty good. It wasn't that bad. It was actually good. Okay, I was worried about you. I'm like, dog, don't eat nothing out here in New York and then have it fuck you up, man. You gonna go back to L.A. shitting on us? Crazy, man. <laughs> no, it was cool in the gang. It was good out there. Where you at, man? You got the babies with you? Now, nah, so my, my aunt, we, I'm just getting back now from my aunt, um, you know, this is celebrating her 89th birthday. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, so, you know, shout out to her, man. I'm just literally getting back, man, uh, from it. You know, it was an amazing, you know, get together with the family. We all had, you know, good. A lot of people came up from South Carolina. Shout out to them. Um, I put her on to you, man. I was playing, you know, some of your stuff earlier. And she sleep now, but, you know, um, definitely shout out to you again, because she went through, because I was, she was telling me about watching the Little Rock Nine on television. And yeah. obviously, you know, we wasn't around then. I know you're 75 years old, bro, but we wasn't around, <laughs> stop. But we wasn't around then. And yeah. she talked to me about like, you know, segregation, her not being able to go to like certain schools and all that. And there's certain things that she just doesn't know, even though she lived for... 89. Oh, my Lord. Yo, shut oh. that video up, bro. Okay, Sorry, okay, I'm, I'm, we're going to get you back because them kids are, okay, yeah. Them, we got to get you back up. Say, y'all got to give them kids some cookies or something. And what, it's, what, okay, what time is it, by the way? It's, you know, it's almost two in the morning, Sage. What are the babies doing up this time? <laughs> what are them kids doing up this time of night? You got to put them to sleep, Sage. You got to, you got to put on cocoa milling and give them some milk. <laughs> it's two o'clock in the morning. They, them kids are showing out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get a hot boy in here. Let's get a hot boy in the building. Hot boy. Hey, Mister Nasheed, how are you doing today? Tonight, I'm I'm good, man. How are you, hot boy? I'm blessed. Um. Regarding the topic, what have Pan-Africanist groups accomplished? I, I'm inclined to agree with you because I'm pretty sure you're going to say not much. And I'm inclined to agree with you, um, not much. They haven't accomplished much. Um, I'll be brief. Or I won't take up uh, your platform. I, I, I have not gotten a chance to see microphone check yet, but congratulations on your new production. I'm still politically at odds with you. I think most of what you're saying political wise is a bunch of shit. Trump like what? Huh? Elaborate. Elaborate. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll elaborate. Um, like this war that you're pioneering between um quote unquote FBAs and tethers. I think it's kind of productive and divisive. I think that and I also no. disagree. Wait, wait, 
wait, no, 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 no. You're not going to trauma dump. You got to elaborate. You got to, no, 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 because y'all have all that trauma dumping on us. You, you're not going to act like our grievances are not legitimate. Some of the tethers, they are a problem. They are a problem in your homeland and they become a problem to us. Is that factual or not factual, Todd Boy? That not factual from my experience. Uh, yeah, that is no, from no, no. That that's disingenuous, sir. You got people from your home because you're from the Caribbean. I can hear you. Accent. I'm Jamaican. I know that. I can hear your accent. You got people who come from the Caribbean who are actively lying about our culture, trying to co-opt it. That's a problem, and that's that is that is very. True. That is very true, and I really wish that we could uh, reach some middle ground because just today alone, because, see, I am a Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica, but I was raised in America, so I consider myself um, FBA, basically. Uh, for no. Term. no. Hold on, let me finish. No, just a oh, point no, no, it don't work like that. Sir, sir, you know? let me finish, because you can't really, uh, really respond to me if you don't hear the entirety of my statement. Okay, well, so right, you don't want me to right. use your term. All right, fine. But Hold that's on, that, taking up more no, air time. No, 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 slow down. How, how, how does that work? How could you be FBA and you're from Jamaica? How would, how would that work? I want to hear it. We just got to slow down and make it make sense. Being a Jamaican who immigrated here, how would you be a foundation of Black American? Make it make sense. Sure. Uh, so, um, FBA, the term you're using, a foundation of Black American, I think is a bunch of bullshit. No, 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 don't start because you're whining. I don't want you to be a beta male. You can't be a beta male. You now and people in hell want, uh, you're trying to troll your way out of it because you know it sounds ridiculous because you're it sounds like you're upset with it because you can't co-opt it that's why you think it's bullshit because see you can't tether off of it right wrong no 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 because see that's the thing if y'all can't tether off something oh it's some bullshit it's not legitimate if you can't co-opt it and that's the problem the term foundational black American can't be remixed or co-opted. And that's why you have a problem, sir. Let's be real. Just tell the truth. And we can start with truth. And that's how we can meet middle ground. That's why you have a problem with it. Because yeah, that that's, means, a, that's an that, interesting guess, but you're not. No, 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 no. Because that means you can't get something that we get. Okay. Because, see, you guys and my, my guy, Mikhail, is making a great point. See, here's the problem with Jamaicans. Let me get on you, sir, because we're going to speak truth to power. Whenever we get something going on, y'all are some of the first ones to jump in with the handout. Y'all wait for us to kick in the door, and then you go running with them little ashy feet and beating us to the punch. When we foundational Black Americans went over to Ethiopia and helped the Ethiopians fight to keep their independence in Haile Selassie, said, hey, you black people in America, I got some land over here for you to give you things. Your people in Jamaica heard about that and ran over there to Jamaica, to Ethiopia before we can even set foot over there. They ran over there and took it over. You understand? Based on what we fought for. So a lot of things, even with Marcus Garvey, we built Marcus Garvey up. Marcus Garvey became a thing because of foundation of black Americans. Y'all didn't even like Marcus Garvey. But now that we built his legacy up, y'all tether off that. Like, oh, the great Marcus. We we gave you Marcus Garvey. We gave you the great Marcus Garvey. See, yeah, there's a lot of things that you guys are used to tethering off of, but you can't tether off foundational Black Americans. And Hot Boy, even your name, Hot Boy, you're tethering off our brother who was on Cash Money Records. If you can't tether off something, you got a problem with it. Ain't that right, hot boy? That is 100% incorrect. I just think the term FBA is a bunch of forced uh, terminology. You know, it's a How bunch so? of forced lexicon. Because How so? Um, we're at, see, 
when a cop stops me and a judge adjudicates me. Oh, he Lord. Don't, don't or an FBA. Don't. He just sees a... That doesn't change your lineage, sir. Our lineage isn't based on our interaction with the dominant Yes, society. our lineage is based on how we're perceived by our government. When the government uh, no. at us, they see no, all because the no, that no, 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 no. You're going to be a Jamaican no matter what, sir. No matter what happens, no matter if you go to jail, no matter what, if you and I are driving down the street and they mistake us for each other, that doesn't stop you from being Jamaican. You're still Jamaican. Even if that cop say, okay, these are two niggas, you're still Jamaican. I'm still a foundational black American. So what makes my lineage different than yours? Why can't I own my lineage like you own your lineage? Huh? Well, anyway, as I was saying, uh, the way a third party perceives you or perceives us says more about our us than we perceive ourselves. So you that separating us with labels like FBA and ADOS and Tether. I mean, the I know who's not going to use any of those terms, Joe Biden and the rest of those racist motherfuckers in government. They're not going to be calling you an FBA. They're not going to be calling me a tether. They're going to be calling both of us black. And that's that how I can. But y'all, and y'all don't even consider yourself black if we're going to keep it a buck. Because y'all be saying, yeah, I, I'm black and Jamaican. Oh, I'm not black. I'm Jamaican. So y'all don't even consider yourself black. So it doesn't matter what you're called. It's how your lineage is. Your lineage is Jamaican. It goes to a particular island. My lineage goes to a particular landmass, North America. I'm a foundational black American. No matter who perceives me or what, my lineage doesn't change. And that upsets you because you can't tether off of it because we've gatekept our lineage. You see, that's where the real anger is from. All of this other stuff you're saying is just babble, hot boy. You're just well, upset because... I mean, that doesn't... Well... What you're saying says a lot more about you, Mr. Nasheed, than it says about How me. So? You're saying that I'm How angry, and I don't see where you get that I'm angry from because I'm not angry. And yes, you're, very angry. Uh, you're very, you're very hostile. You're trying to be, you're very passive aggressive with it, but you're very hostile. Huh? Boy, you shouldn't be hostile. You know that's going to work up your must. You don't want to be hostile. Um, you have a lineage. Be proud of your Jamaican lineage. I am be proud, very of. proud of. Uh, I'm proud of all black things. You know, I'm proud of. Black America, um, Jamaicans, Haitians, the indigenous African Americans, uh, you know, I'm saying Foundation of Black great, but yeah. you and the FBA are not great. You are a made up organization. Um, Jamaica is made up. Somebody made Jamaica up, sir. Somebody made it up. Somebody made up your flag and everything. Your flag came from Scotland, by the way. Your flag is basically the Scottish flag in a different color. Some white Scottish man made your flag. So Jamaican is made up. Your food is made up. And then up. you're your food... talking about you've gate kept your... Hold on. No, no, no. Look. You're going you're gonna to get this word. You want to talk about made up your food that you're so proud of. That's made up by East Indians. The curry and all of that. Come on now. That's made up too. Everything is made up, but we're determining our lineage name. We determine that. That's a power move when you name yourself, sir. Okay. Well, Tariq, I mean, it may be a power move based on what you've gone through in life. And you also said that you are the gatekeepers of your culture, but nothing could be further from the truth. You are not the gatekeepers of hip hop. Jimmy Iovine will tell you any day what to do. I mean... No, he won't. No, he won't. Jimmy Iovine ain't got nothing to do with what goes on on the hip-hop grassroots. Jimmy Iovine controls what hip-hop record or what rap record goes on the damn radio. Y'all better get it right. Y'all, A lot of the tether class, y'all don't understand the record industry from hip-hop. They don't control hip-hop. Hip-hop is and has always been controlled by the streets. My film, Microphone Check, is hip-hop, and that's 100% independent, and it's the top documentary in the country right now. We control that. Y'all tethers are so used to finding a white daddy 
to tell you what to do. You don't understand how to be independent. Y'all want to run to white mommy, white daddy and flee all over the place. You don't understand about standing 10 toes down and getting on code with your lineage and then building something and creating something and putting something out there that's successful. That's what we did with Microphone Check. That was foundational black Americans getting on code, funding our own film, promoting our own film and putting our own film out there so that people can enjoy it and it's successful. We don't bow down to the Jimmy Iovine, sir. That's what tethers do, okay? Well, that is a very poor example of being on code and so on and so forth and gatekeeping because, yeah, like I like I noticed, you know, I love all Black people, you know what I'm saying? With me, I can say for you, of course, but... Uh, I don't hate Yo, nobody. the Asians infiltrated your culture. They sell all their beauty supplies in your neighborhood. The a did you did you really try to go there with Asians, dude? You do know we have been to Jamaica, right? Did you really go there? Brother, there's an Asian woman on Twitter and TikTok who's in Jamaica sunning y'all ass. There's an Asian woman over there talking about how Asians are really running Jamaican culture and how y'all got a lot of stuff from Asians. There's an Asian woman in Jamaica right now shitting on y'all. Most of those business out there in Jamaica are Asian and East Indian run. Did you really try to play the Asian angle, sir? And you guys are the majority over there. And the Asians are sunning you in your own homeland. Did you really try to go there? Well, it's an FBA attribute to be loud, strong, and wrong. Um, when you contribute a majority of the finances to the household or the nation, you get a majority of the say-so. And that's that's the problem. You guys, y'all tethers, will sit up here trying to whine about what foundational Black Americans create, yet anything you got going on, the Asians finance it. The tethers over in Africa love trying to talk crap about our foundational Black American museum that looks better than theirs, and their little janky museums are put together by the Asians. Their little monuments and statues are funded by Asians. Their little anything they have has to be funded by the damn Asians. We don't sit up here wait on, waiting on them to fund our stuff. We can fund our own things. We know how to get on code with each other because we're deeply rooted and we know the power of codification and not fleeing all over the place, sir. So you can learn a thing or two, couldn't you? Absolutely incorrect. I will never learn anything from you, Mr. Nasheed, because... Well, you need to because you fleeing and coming over here being disrespectful and then talking about how the Asians are giving the money so they're supposed to be over there running your black asses and you're the majority. That's a coward-ass mentality to have. You don't even understand what you sound like right now, sir. Are you listening to yourself? Well, actually, I am listening to myself and I'm also listening to you. But anyway... Jamaica is, uh, like America, it's a capitalist society, so whoever puts in the most money will reap the most benefits, and that's just the way it is. You know, and why as far do, as them and why, running shit. And why, do, and why do millions of y'all sitting over there, black folks on that island, y'all can't get on code and put your resources together and control your own economy, sir? Why do y'all have to let a handful of Asians come over there and run shop while y'all sitting over there getting sunned by them? Huh? The same reason America has to let a handful of Israelis run their country and call the shots for them and their military. But that's not the point. The okay. point is, okay. y'all have, you said that y'all are some great gatekeepers to your culture and y'all have been yes, we are. heinous gatekeepers to your culture. So I don't know where you get off all of a sudden talking about your. Oh, uh, yeah, we are great gatekeepers because we learn that sharing our culture with little disrespectful, ungrateful tethers like yourself, it's been a mistake. That's why the delineation movement is so powerful. And this is why we're taking control of our culture, just like we're taking control and we're gatekeeping hip hop. We did it with the microphone check film. That's why so many tethers are shook right now, sir. Listen to yourself. You sound like Candace Owens. 
Listen to yourself, hot boy. Go ahead. And you're a political scientist. You Are you down with Candace Owens, by the way? Yes, I think uh, Candace has some good political opinions. There it is. There it is. Tethers of a feather flock to damn gather. Mm, mm, mm. Well, but but this is the thing, though. I just want you to clarify for me, and I'm being respectful. There's no need for name. I'm me like, too. Me too. Yeah, you I'm are. You are for sure. But I just want to mm. understand why you consider yourselves your your organization, which is not black people. Don't put that on all black people. FBAs don't represent, you know. What organization? You, We're not a part of your make-believe organization that you didn't concoct it in your head. Just because you didn't concoct it some janky organization in your brain, you're not going to make us members of a non-existent imaginary organization. There is no organization. We have a lineage that we're upholding. You're sitting up here creating fake organizations in your brain. Just like you had to sit up there and create fake meals and food in your homeland when you were starving. You had to fantasize about Sally Struthers coming to get you. We don't do fantasy football here, sir. Ain't no organization. That's in your imagination. We have a lineage, sir. And a lineage can't be shaken, remixed, or taken away. Our lineage is our lineage. You understand that? Sir, chitlins and collard greens are fake food. Do you understand that? Now, to the point, you're saying that you're... And bush meat and bammy is fake food, too. But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, hot boy. Because I know you're not going to try I mean, to seriously. get on the food. You're not going to try to... I know, I, know you, I know you ain't going to try the food game on us, okay? I know you're not going to try to have a food war with us. Are you really going to try to go there? Go ahead. But sir. I'm go. saying, though, you you said that you have been, and you did clean that up a little bit, saying that after you've seen how people abused our culture, the, the black culture, the African-American culture, then y'all had to start the delineation movement. But mm -hmm. you're saying that shit as if you, you're doing such a great job or you're you're. We're doing a phenomenal job. Look at how the tethers are getting triggered. We are gatekeeping our culture. We're saying, no, this is ours and this is going to be your homeland. You know how, how shameful that is. Y'all can't even go to certain beaches on your own homeland as black folks. They keep y'all away from certain beaches. Ain't that sad? And that's your homeland, right? Go ahead, hot boy. What's sad is your ability to habitually and pathologically lie because you're saying that- Where's the lie? Where's the lie? You know we've been there. I've been there, dude. For the right, oh, for the right price. So you got to pay your way to get up on those beaches for the right price right. on your as, own. As is as is the case all over the world. If you come to Miami, you have to pay to go go to the beach, to be honest with you. And no, also, you don't. And those no, 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 you don't. No, you don't. What beach do you have to pay for in Miami? You can walk on any beach in Miami. What beach do you have to pay for in Miami? What beach do you have to pay for in California? You can walk on any beach in California. The natives, there are certain beaches you can't even go to. They won't let you go to them. Well, the as it is all over the world, you have to pay in many countries over the world. No, 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 no I'm just not going to let you see you telling a lie over and over. Don't make it true, sir. Just uh, there's a jealousy and envy and, and vitriol that, you have to get sunned like that on your own homeland 
and then you come over here and have to tether on to us. And now that we're gatekeeping our lineage, you can't tether on to it. And that's where this hostility is coming from, sir. That's all this is. Y'all can't tether on to us because we ain't going to let nobody tell us where the hell what beach we can't go to. We're going to step to them and we're going to do some pushback as foundational black Americans. We don't have sir. a history of that. We don't, no, no, we don't have a history of letting these folks tell us what the hell we can and can't do. We turn up. Sir. So you want to get around us oh. so that you can be around the turn up. Turned up, huh? So you're talking uh -huh. about somebody getting sunned in their own country, like those uh -huh. illegal immigrants are doing the people, the black people in Chicago. They and that. And the uh, black people in Chicago are pushing the hell back. There's a reason. There's a reason why Biden's numbers are trash right now. We're fighting back on that. We're pushing back on that. The Biden's numbers are in the tank right now. We got a huge rally going to Washington D.C. in a few weeks, sir. We're getting that packed up and organized. We ain't fleeing the country. You understand how that works? That's why we're organizing now. You're just putting you your see? neighborhood into homelessness. And that's equally, if not worse, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. But the illegal immigrants, they're pushing you out of your neighborhoods. They're taking your parks and high schools and using them for shelter. And, that, and that's why we're pushing back against you, Tethers. That's why we're saying no more. There's a pushback right now. We know what you Tethers are doing. We know. This is why we're saying no. We don't want this. And that's why you're upset, because we're pushing back from tethers and people trying to come and undermine us. Immigrants have felt that way about you since the beginning of time. They've hated you, and you're just now starting pushing. And they hate themselves. That's why they've had to flee. And the thing is, the immigrants wouldn't be able to come over here if it weren't for us. That's the problem. You, you're, you're saying everything that we're saying. These musty immigrants and tethers who we help and we help them flee from these raggedy homelands, they come over here and have vitriol to the only people who help them. And then we're wrong for delineating. Listen to you. And they don't listen. You just, you just confirm why we should delineate. You just confirm why we should delineate. These people come over here hating us, and then you're mad at us for delineating? I'm, I'm mad at you. The first thing I was going to say was, because I am Jamaican, I, I do agree with you that these people from Haiti, ex Jamaica, especially these old ladies, they come over here with the most putrid hatred against y'all for no damn reason. They're we know this. They're cutting. You know, that uh, the only thing you, know, you have to do to succeed in America is go over there and not act like the niggers and put the niggers down and treat them poorly. And you, uh, no, no, no. It's the it's really the opposite. You got to come over here and act exactly like us. You have to assimilate into foundation of Black American society and act like us to come up. That's how you come up. You understand. That's yeah, exactly how. That's that's how that's how an immigrant comes up and holds uh -huh. down at the same time. Uh huh. Exactly. That's called tethering. So you're admitting everything that we're saying, and that's why we delineate. We don't need that. So why do you think we should allow that to continue to happen? Hmm. You just admitted everything we've been saying that you have a bunch of degenerate opportunist tethers who come over here hating on us and trying to undermine us after we help them. And then you question why we want to delineate from that? Make it make sense. I'm not questioning why you want to delineate from that. Then what's your problem? You should why, then, why, you then, why, then, why, then why is us looking at our lineage and saying, hey, look, our lineage is different. Why is that a problem? We, we want to delineate from that. Why is that a problem? Come on, hot boy. Well, um, it's not a problem for me. I'm just saying that you, the F the people who call yourselves FBA. No, no, no. You mean the 40 million foundation of black Americans that's here. You're not going to make up some imaginary group. When we talk about foundation of black Americans, we're talking about 40 million non-immigrants. That's what we're talking about, sir. 
and tethers have been over here trying to undermine the 40 million non-immigrants. No, no, they saying, are not trying. They're succeeding in undermining you know, what I'm trying to show you. They have succeeded. Um, not quite, because we're still here and we're still pushing back. And you have to go back and fix up those homelands because we're not going to allow the undermining of foundation of black Americans. We're shutting that down, sir. We're not letting that happen. We're not letting that happen. Yeah. All right. I feel you. I, the struggle is real, but yeah. You know what? The, and, and, hey, listen, when you saw them beating them people at the border, your, your Caribbean brethren, who were trying to come over here and were getting whooped at the border by them white supremacists on horseback. And they start looking to us like, FBA, niggas, come help us. And we were like, hey, man, do you? Yeah, that they, they kind of felt that, right? They no, kind of felt that little... They, right? Like, that, I mean, it like most things you talk about, it didn't happen that way in reality. It only happened that way in your mind. Okay, how did it happen? Because it was on video and the photos and the video was out there where your, your Caribbean brother was getting whooped on. So what part of getting whooped on did we not so see? So why, if y'all could delineate, Jamaicans can't delineate and we have to be lumped in with Haitians and indigenous Africans and all that. that because that's your, no, that's your Caribbean brethren, sir. That's your Caribbean brethren. So you all immigrants. That's the common thread that you have. And then they start shipping them, and then they start shipping them back in large numbers too. After that whooping, because we weren't sitting up here putting a cape on for your fellow fellow Caribbean, sir. How did that work out? When FBAs weren't there for the rescue, how'd that work out? Huh? Ask Eric Adams. It worked out fantabulous. We got jobs as lifeguards, uh, ten thousand dollar debit cards, and y'all still ain't got shit. Y'all up there in New York getting rounded up, thrown in jail, left and right, sir. They're throwing y'all up in the jails up there, left and right in New York, by the way. Don't leave that part out. They're rounding you up. How yeah, can yeah. I? CNN yeah. ain't doing anything like that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, they, they getting some of y'all locked up up there. They getting some of y'all locked up, and then they shipping a lot of you back. And you wrote, uh, and you're right. Dumped. And you're writing, and you're writing for Candace Owens, and you know, she's on the Trump train, I think. And Trump is, you know, he he can possibly get back in office. You know, Trump is going to send a lot of your cousins back. He's going to send a lot of y'all back. You know that, right? He 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 should throw a lot of y'all niggas under the bus, but he he's not. Trump really didn't do anything to harm foundation of Black Americans when he was in office. Stupid shit, y'all be doing. Y'all should be Trump. throwing. All Trump, you know, it should have, would have, could have. Um, Trump, that's why I don't really have that much of a problem with Trump politically. Trump really didn't do anything to harm foundational black Americans. But your, your little musty cousins and those folks, if he gets back in office, it sounds like you don't have a problem with them getting thrown back across the border with their little chicken dinners in their hand. When they were whooping your little Caribbean guy, he had a little chicken dinner in his hand. He didn't let them. Uh, no, he didn't. What's funny, your Caribbean guy, when he was getting whooped on horseback, when the guy on horseback was whooping him, he never let go of the chicken dinner. All right. But, oh, ouch, nigga. Oh, oh uh, nigga. Uh, F, F, F us. And that chicken dinner did not go nowhere. It stayed in his hand. He was not going to let go of that chicken dinner. So I want y'all to look at the video and look at the picture. That chicken dinner was not going nowhere. He was going to take that wherever he went, whatever border he went to, that chicken dinner was going to go with him. So anyway, anyway, my talking brother. To you, bro. But I mean, to, just to wrap it up, you know, like I said, um, the Asians and the Muslims, they only set up shop in black communities. And it was like your homeland. And they're over there wrecking shop in your homeland. They're sunning you. Y'all are the majority over there and the Asians are taking over. You guys got that coon spirit. I remember when the Queen of England died, it was y'all Jamaicans running around, rolling on the ground, crying like big old musty coons over the Queen dying. So that shows your mindset, sir. God bless you. Any any last words, hot boy, with your coon family lineage? Any Any last words? 
Yes. Um, thank you for letting me come on and say my piece. But um, yeah. you all are the dumbest organization ever. But we don't flee. Okay. We don't have an organization. And we don't flee like cowardly tethers like you did, sir. And the only reason you're over here is because Foundation of Black Americans gave you a lane. And if it weren't for us making it possible for you to flee, you'd be over there in Ocho's Rios, scratching your ass, eating some Bammy, trying to fuck a fat white woman for a green card. All right? Thank you so much, hot boy. I appreciate oh, you, okay? Cool. All right. I appreciate you too, bro. Have a good week. There you go. All right. <laughs> ungrateful tethers. There it is. Boy, these tethers are so damn ungrateful. Lord, talking about Asians. Asians over there running stuff in your homeland. Got you fleeing from your own homeland. And you're going to come over here telling us about some Asians. Man, if you don't stop, boy, these these tethers are so mad, boy. Don't stop, boy. These these tethers are, so mad, boy. Us delineating, and I'm telling y'all, family, how powerful the term "foundational Black American" is. Remix it. He wants the tether on that term so bad. That term is so codified and it's so Trump tight. You cannot latch on to it if you're not of our lineage. So that's why they have to try to turn it into an organization. You think it's all a group? It is a cult. They got to they gotta play a make-believe game that it's something else. It's a lineage that you cannot tack on to, sir. That means you're going to have to hold your own nuts. And the fact that or the thought of these guys having to fight for themselves, it terrorizes them. They're terrified to have to fight for themselves and fend for themselves if they don't have us doing all the heavy fighting and lifting. I want y'all to understand the mindset of a tether because he admitted everything. He admitted, yeah, we immigrants come over and we take over y'all and we yeah, we undermine y'all. They, they admit it. They know. They know, family. And part of them being able to do that is for them to tether as us, to come into our circles and tether as us and then work their way up the ranks. That's what the anger is about, family. So when we delineate and say, hey, no, you, man, where are you from? You ain't of our lineage. So we are not going to just let you come in here and be our spokesperson. So you're not going to wiggle your way up our ranks like that. So we, we're cutting off the tethering at its tracks. We're cutting them things off. And they got a problem with that. Let me get John Horse in the Let me get John Horse in the building. Then we get um um Thug Spike to John Horse. Brother John Horse, hop on. Yeah, what's good, Tariq? I'm good. How you doing, fam? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good, man. I don't know what they, uh, what what the tethers gonna uh, do come November, cause uh, you know, you know how the white supremacists go, bro. They're gonna specifically target the tethers first. They're gonna target the dark yeah. immigrants first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they don't peep yep. game on it. They they gonna come for them first. They ain't even gonna look at the Latinos. They coming for all them uh, the dark skinned immigrants first. Right, and them dark skin they are gonna be looking at us for help. And I'm gonna be like, well, you know, you mm -hmm. know, no, 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 no. You, you guys are the ones. You guys are y'all got it popping, and you're the model minority. No, no, no. Get your little chicken dinner. Hold on tight to your chicken dinner because they gonna whoop that chicken dinner out your hand. So knock yourself out. Let's get Thug Spice in the house. What's up, Tyreek? You are so funny, bro. Um, how you doing, dude? I'm good. I, you you are hilarious, and I love how poised you are. Every time yes, you give a solid read to anybody that doubts exactly who we are and why we are who we are, like, you you can't infiltrate this. But I was so mm -hmm. interested in your film because I do a lot of film festival work, okay. and um, I'm in North Carolina, and I, okay. I would love to know how I could get get the film, how I could see it. Is it on a theatrical run or are you on a festival run? Um, we, we're doing a theatrical run and it's on Blu-ray. You can get it on Blu-ray. You go to microphonecheck.com, 
microphonecheck.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, check it out. It's a very good film. Very, very good film. But check it out, beloved. It's real good. Microphonecheck.com. Let's get Latte. What's up, Latte? Let's turn your microphone on. Latte, what's your name? Latte Liberal. Okay, Latte Liberal, you bounced. Okay, you ain't got to say nothing. You shouldn't have brought your ass up here. The minute I call your name, you're going to bounce. Let's get the Atavis. Brother, the Atavis in the building. And then we're going to get East Siders, Black Jack. Let's get Atavis. The Atavis, what's up, brother? All right, let's get East Siders while we're waiting on Atavis. Hey, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, man, I wanted to tackle so many things that that teller said, man. First thing, it's funny that we talked about from day one when they start coming here. We told them about how white supremacy works, and they just yep. told us to shut up and and don't say nothing about it, and just pretty much lay dead about the subject. Now, mm-hmm. when they starting to feel the heat, now all of a sudden they want to talk about, oh, we're all the same, and more to the point, you know, just show you when they started when we started delineating that really put a bug in the ass about that. You know, because they can't, like you said, they can't tether on to what we're doing. And for the record, right. we're not just talking about black immigrants. When we say tether, we're talking about anybody who tether off of anybody else's culture, particularly right. ours. Because everybody does that, even the so-called Wiggers, the whites. So we yep. want to make sure that everybody understands what's really going on about this. And also, for the record, we don't hate everybody. We don't hate anybody. But we're done with the disrespect. It's just that simple. And I'll land there. Thank you so much. Real okay, talk, man. Can you, can, yes, um, Latte? You can hear me now, huh? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you now. Okay, so I, I really didn't bounce, um, but my okay. mic was off. Um, I am a Black American, mm-hmm. um, and I, I really don't like the word foundational Black American. Why not? Well... The, the ideology uh, with the group. They're, what group? Wait, 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 what group? With, with your group. There is no group. I have no group, man. Well, see, that's the thing. Uh, you say there is no leader. There is no leader or no group. You just made up something. No, come on. Yeah. L- no, listen, come on, nothing. Listen, no, listen. no, ma'am. I, no, listen, ma'am. I I've been ma'am, around. No, ma'am, listen, ma'am, let let me ma'am, talk. Ma'am, Can no, I? No, no, no. You you're not going to start lying. Okay, let's. We're not going to do that. Let's let's slow down, ma'am. You just made up a non-existent group. There is no group. If there's a group in your mind, you go deal with that in your own imagination. There is no group, nor am I the leader of any non-existent group. Okay, so you can't pretend that there's a group and then make believe somebody's the the leader of a group life don't work like that ma'am and then you want to build a straw man argument based on your imaginary group we don't do that because your premise is already starting off wrong everything else is nullified okay if you starting off on a false premise everything you say afterwards is nullified it doesn't need to be spoken if you're going to start off with a false premise um Ma'am, you are, you said you're the latte liberal. You are a, a, a Democrat. You sound like some kind of um, Kamala Harris, Biden type of Democratic shill. Are you like clicked in with the Democratic Party? Unmute your microphone, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, I put this little note in uh Ma'am, are you part? Of, are you a part of the Democratic Party? With like, are you a part of an organization with the Democrats? Let's be real. We talk truth to power here. I'm an independent, and I know you're not going to let me say anything. No, no, no. I, no, you're going to have to tell the truth, no, ma'am, ma'am, you, ma'am. You have to just tell the truth. I, okay? I'm trying. You're, you're not going to let me speak. Uh, Marie. Am, but you're, you're not. But you're not going to, ma'am. You're not going to. You're not going to lie though. Especially lie on me, okay? How can if there? Lying, how can there be discourse 
if you're not, if you're going to talk over me, that's because your discourse. You can't that's but your no, discourse. No, no, you can't. We can't have discourse if you're going to lie. We can't have discourse if you're going to mute my mic. Now, Ladies Ms. and Lady, gentlemen, Ms. I Ms. put Lady, a note in the chat. Read Ms. my Lady. chat. There cannot Ms. be dis. Miss Gladys, Auntie Gladys, you can't start lying. You started off on a false premise. We don't do lies here, ma'am. All right. Well, you can say what you need to say, but when you start lying, we have to rewind and we have to start over with truth. Okay? Because I don't I don't do lies. I don't really I don't justify anybody lying. If you start lying, I'm not going to even validate that conversation. The conversation is invalid, ma'am. So you got to start off with truth. Now, let's start again. Now, let's start off with truth. Okay? Now, I know you used to run in shit at the bingo games, but this is not the bingo game, okay? We're going to speak truth to power, Miss Gladys. Now, let's start. Unmute your microphone, ma'am. Your grandkid should have told you how to work an iPhone a little bit better. But go ahead, Miss Gladys. Please stop with the sarcasm. It has no valid point here. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Now, now, why don't you like the term foundational black American? And don't pretend that there's a group that doesn't exist because that's not true. Why? What's the real reason? First of all, the ideology that you have. What ideology? First of all, Tariq, the terminology saying there is no leader. Right. When you know there is a leader. No, there's not. Sir, How can a person be a leader of a lineage? Please let me finish. No, you're not going now, to lie. Ber Bernice, if I, son, how can you be the leader son, of a lineage? When you throw Gertrude, how can you be the leader of a lineage? You can't be the leader of a lineage. What you're saying makes no sense, ma'am. What are you talking about? Do you have Alzheimer's, ma'am? What are you talking about, ma'am? And I see, hold on, somebody sent me a picture of you up here with, you got a picture of Biden and Kamala where you're gushing over them. So yeah, you're one of these Biden Kamala bots, okay? Bernice, hop on. So you are Democrat. Another ship. thing, when you said you're going to take a busload to... Uh, stand against Biden, Biden for uh, against immigrants. That I is your that. interest. That is your interest. What? Okay, I didn't say that. You are an old pathological, depends wearing liar, ma'am. Uh, do you have grandkids? Do they sit up and let their grandma lie like this? I never said I'm going to take a busload of people any damn where. I've never said anything remotely like that, Gertrice. Ma'am, you Democratic shills are pathological liars. And that's what, let's just let's keep, let's, let's keep it a buck. You're upset because you're a, a Biden-Harris shill. And we are looking out for our lineage. And we're saying that we want certain things tangible for our lineage. And you can't really refute that. So you are making up a non-existent organization and building a straw man argument based on that. Now, ma'am, speak truth to power. Unmute your microphone, Bernice. Your socioeconomic status is totally different from a percentage of the people in this group. That may be there is no that group. may be your self-interest, sir. Ma'am, whatever group that's in your imagination, you deal with them when you're at the VA hospital getting your medication, ma'am. Deal with that non-existent group there. We are from a lineage. 
We have a lineage, and it's 40 million people in that lineage, ma'am. We are non-immigrants. So I don't know what group in your imagination, if you want to deal with an imaginary group, you have to deal with that on your own time. We don't deal with that here. Now, how long have you been a Democratic shield, ma'am? How long have you been shilling for Biden and Kamala Harris? See, this is one of these women who um, helps um, Clyburn fry catfish nuggets for the get out the vote campaigns. She's one of them. Go ahead, Gladys. Third thing, sir, your definition of lineage is totally wrong. How so? Sir, when you say lineage, you are taking it to one generation America. Sir, you are totally wrong. You really well, need, to do what, some, you need to do some research. What okay, is your me. lineage? Google you have several you you steps it, to right. a lineage. You really need to go back to school, sir. School when you school say, you when you say lineage, you just take it to one generation. People school in me. this People in this session, some of these people can go back five generations and you're saying, what is your lineage? Now, that's just four things that I have to say. That's four things. What are you talking about, Gladys? You will never know because you put me on mute. And, and you're then not when muted, you don't want to hear not it, muted. you throw names. Gladys, like you're just bully. saying stuff. Like a book. But you can't even pronounce lineage right. You're like, this was you four generations from your lineage. Your lineage, you don't know what your lineage is in South Dakota. Your lineage is something special. I spill blood in Sama. You don't know what your lineage is, baby. You're just granny babbling. You're just granny babbling right now, ma'am. I'm giving you a platform, but it's just bad. You're just granny babbling. Why don't your grandbabies come get you and put you somewhere? The nursing home is calling, ma'am. You lost it. You shouldn't be driving. Ladies and gentlemen, you see how the bully reacts. Now, he's Nobody's spent, bullying he spent you. 30 minutes with that guy talking about Jamaica. But Go, wasting go ahead. your time. Wasting you're, you're, your precious you're time because he has go ahead, go, nothing go ahead, to Gladys. say. Go ahead, Gladys. He has Gladys, nothing. Gladys. He's a comedian. Gladys. He's a go comedian ahead and, and he's Gladys. a grifter. He takes your okay. fun. He's not in the same socioeconomic uh, demographic. Ma'am, the, as only, the only thing that's grifting are your dentures from them gums with all of that granny babbling. Ma'am? You're just saying stuff. Now, now, Glad, are you a black person, by the way? Somebody said you might be a white person cosplaying as a black person. Are you a black person? Gladys. No, listen. I, are you a black person? I am black. I am highly educated. That's why I know that. Really? That's why I know wait, wait, that. Wait, 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 any... wait, 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 wait. You're highly educated and you can't pronounce the word lineage? You keep talking about lineage, but you're highly educated? Okay. It, it, lineage rhymes with spinach. Okay. All right, education. Where'd that education come from? So I can keep my kids away from that institution. Go ahead, um, Gladys. And Gladys, are you? A, do you come from an immigrant background, ma'am? See, that's the first thing right there. When there's uh -oh. nothing to say, it's uh -oh. where do you come from? Uh oh. Where is your lineage? Uh -oh. And then, where where is your lineage? And, and, and the then, where is he your lineage? Comical, the clown. He's the. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Family, y'all know when you ask somebody where their background is, and they get to babbling. You know what that is. Uh-oh. Where her lineage from? Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. I think you answered without answering, ma'am. Somebody has a different lineage. Uh-oh. That's why you have a problem with foundational Black Americans, because nobody would really have a problem with their own 
lineage. You understand? Nobody would really have a problem with that, but a tether would. Go ahead, Gladys. Let's hear you, dear. Go One ahead, of these days, you. I'm going to meet you. Oh, oh. And um. And do what? What are you gonna do? Please don't <laughs> don't do nothing sexual to me. <laughs> don't. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Lord? <laughs> you're you're gonna see that I'm a black woman. Okay, because a lot of these aunties be trying to get No, no, no. Oh, God. I, no, you're married, and, and I'm I married. I, I, and I'm married. I don't want, your, but, I don't want, your, I don't want no I, granny. I really I want, wish. I don't want granny. I don't want granny. Pants, no, 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 sir, no. But no. go ahead. Listen, okay. sweetheart. No. Go ahead, dear. No, no, go no. Ahead, dear. Are, I, you, are, you married, are you married to a white man? No. No, no, no. Okay. No. My, my husband is black. He's, what's his, he's what's his lineage? He's chocolate. What's his lineage? What's his lineage? He's a black American. Okay. And and listen, I, I wish that you would use your knowledge in a better way. I, I wish you like how? Listen. How am I not? You, using you, it in a you started in Africa or 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 Jamaica or in the Caribbean, you were somewhere else and you tried to um, make a living with those brothers and sisters. And, and then you started again here. And I, I guess you were what? doing well. What? What? Listen, let me. What, what are you talking about? Where, where did I try to make a living with somebody in Africa? What the hell are you talking about, dear? What are you talking about, beloved? What, what are you talking about? What are you saying, dear? I know you're older and you, your mind be slipping away. You just be imagining stuff. What What are you talking about? Beloved, these people know you. So, like I said, um, don't become a clown. Don't be comical. Don't be a bully. They know you. And, and like right. I said. And they know you, man. We hear you. We hear you sound crazy. You're just making up things and saying stuff, ma'am. You're just saying stuff, ma'am. And you're a mature woman. The, you know, I have a lot of young people listening. They don't need to see granny just saying weird stuff, ma'am. You got to set a better example, ma'am. You can't be misleading people by saying things that's just deliberately false and deceptive. You're way too old to be lying like this, ma'am. You got to be speaking the truth. You're not going to be here that much longer. You got to speak truth to get to heaven. You're not going to get to heaven with these lies. You're going to be down in hell. You and your bingo cards just burning up with lies, ma'am. You can't be this kind of pathological liar. You're too old for that, ma'am. Anyway, girl. Ladies and gentlemen, he could never intimidate me. And Nobody's I wish you me. would feel the same way. He could never. Um, so man, I, man. I can't waste my time trying to get through to him because I already know his because pattern and I hope you know his to pattern too. He will mute me and he'll go through the same two or three personalities, bullying, intimidation, same two or three, you know, types. How have so, I bullied you, dear? Listen, How have I bullied you? Listen. I, I, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to try to make a mockery of the conversation. There's not no, going to be any discourse. You're going because to silence you my off, conversation. Because you started off lying, ma'am. I can't have you just sitting here lying. I just can't do that, man. We, This is a truth forum that we speak truth to power. I just can't let somebody sit here lying. But anyway, Gertrude, let me let you drink you some soy milk and go to sleep. Um, thank you, dear. Let me get you off here. Lord. This is a democratic shield. Citizen Citizen K, hop on, brother. Good evening, brother Tariq. What's up, brother? How are you? Good evening to everybody. I am from Ghana, West Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I've been listening to you. Uh huh. I think it is important on a global platform like this to be respectful of other people's ideas even if they contradict with yours. There's no need to make mockery of other people like you did with this lady 
and the guy before he, before her. Right. Now, now let's, let me let's finish. Wait. Okay, hold on now. You're going to have to wait now. If you start lying, yes, you will be made a mockery of because we do not lie. And if you lie and you deliberately lie, we have to slow it down because a lot of these people, y'all come from these backgrounds where you're used to lying and scamming and manipulating and scheming. And that's why your societies fail. We don't want that energy here. We want truth to power. We don't want scamming, lying, and manipulating to be normalized. So when y'all start lying, we pump the brakes and we clean out the, the chimney so that we can get real clean smoke coming through. Now go ahead, Citizen K. Go ahead, Citizen K. Okay. Brother, can I speak without being interrupted? Uh -huh. I would appreciate that very much so that people can get educated and get information and they can make their mm -hmm. own minds. But if you keep uh -huh. stopping people, every sentence they make, you stop them, then the actual of thought is distorted. And that's not a way now, to have this kind of conversation. No, 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 no. Let me, let me explain something to you, sir. Um, we run this over here. And we run this forum and we have decorum and we have order. So when you say something, I like for people to stop and elaborate. If you make a claim, you stop and elaborate on your claim. You don't make claims and then dictate how we're going to react to your claims, especially if the claims are false. So we have a real truthful dialogue here. Now, go ahead and continue to what you were saying, sir. Go ahead. Truth can be subjective. But anyway, no, let's put that aside. No, no, truth is, <laughs> let, let, truth let me, the point I want to make is this. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can you can personally decide or would, the, would your group decide that you don't want to have anything to do with shithole Africa. You can. Nobody can stop you from doing that. But there's a lot of people who have affinity to where they come from. If they came from Scotland, they came from Poland, they came from wherever, there's that affinity, that relationship. And I think there's a lot of African-Americans who appreciate their lineage to Africa, their original okay. lineage to Africa. Now, yeah. hopefully, I, I pronounce the word right for you. Yeah. You're making yeah. a mockery of the lady, the lady, finish, you know. Let, let me finish, it. please. So, so stop on, bullying so I'm, people. I'm let me finish. Can I finish? I'm agreeing. You're trying to it's bully sure everybody. Good. If you don't want okay. to listen to people, so, don't come down. on Twitter spaces. Slow, man. I'm slowing down. Don't... I'm not mad. Don't and don't try um, to insult me because I'll insult you back. Sir, you're getting musty, mad. Do I Fuck need to you. get you some work? Do I need to get? Don't you say f me? You don't say that to the green card people. Slow down. Now, what I'm saying, Mister Musty Man, I agree. If people have an affinity to Africa, that's perfectly fine. But don't try to shame us into doing it too. Now, go ahead, Mister Musty, sir. Oh, he bounced. Okay. Yeah, buddy. No, no, no. Don't you try to get musty mad at me, sir. That don't work on me. I'm not one of your your 13 hostage wives that you have that you beat on. You can punk them out. You don't punk me. No, no, no. Y'all used to yelling at women and all that. No, no, no. I'm not one of the, the, the wives you got hostages. You don't do that. We don't play that game. I was actually agreeing with him, and I wanted him to elaborate, but he thought he was going to kind of come in here and call shots. You're not going to call nothing, but you're an Uber to come pick people up. All right. Let's get um, Moshi. Moshi in the building. What's up, brother? What's up, Moshi? How man, are you, Man, I enjoy listening to your space, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way you well, handle yeah, these people, fun. man, I'm telling you, sometimes... Uh, when I had conversations with these folks at work and I try to explain foundational black Americans to them and they get this attitude about it and, you know, they, oh, I'm Jamaican or oh, I'm from Haiti. And I'm like, I don't give a damn about either place. I'm from right. here. I'm from Washington, D.C., right? Mm -hmm. My family been here before America was created. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, and Your family has been here before Jamaica was created, truth be told. <laughs> so... And then the Ghana guy, I'm sitting here listening to this dude. Like, do you know, we know the whole trick of the, 
400 year return back to Ghana. How y'all was over there selling black Americans land two, three times to the same people, defrauding the people that was coming back over there. They don't really want to mm -hmm. tell that truth. You know what they really was doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to own up to the little scams that they got going on over there. We're calling that out. We're not playing these games. We're, going, we're telling the truth. All the truth to power now. We're telling the truth. And people are making videos left and right talking about they're going over there and the scams are just nonstop, man. That's the long and short of it. I'm, we're not going to sit here and keep walking people into scams. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the truth. I don't want my folks to go over there and get scammed because they always run these little scams on us. Uh, uh oh, is this Johnny Somali? Uh oh. Speaking of scam, it's Johnny Somali again, guys. Boy, all the tethers are coming through. Well, so this is the internet tether troll Johnny Somali. What's up, Johnny Somali? Oh, Mr. Tariq Nasheed. Hello. What's going on? King going Donkey on, Kong Gorilla Drifter. How are you? I'm good, my fleeing, musty tether troll friend. How's What's going I on? Am no, I am no tether. I am no troll. Yes, you are. You are fleeing. Brother, can we tethered. stop with the mutes? Why you keep muting? Oh, no, no, slow, slow down. Slow down. You're, you're always trying to cosplay as us, and you can never do it. You can never be us, sir. You can never be a... It, a listen, if I was African-American, I would kill myself. Uh, sir, the only thing you're killing is us with the must. Sir, you go around to different countries getting beat up like a tether. And fucking all the you women. Don't forget that. Oh, no, no, the tricking, tricking off your little tether money. It ain't tricking if you got it, nigga. Oh, uh, yeah, it's tricking, and you ain't really got it. The only thing you got is AIDS and Ebola. So you can never be us. You don't have the game. You go around and beat up all around the world, okay? And that AIDS and Ebola, I'm going to come spread at your little march. Um, no, you're not, sir. No, you're not. Because we're going to spot that forehead a mile I'm away. I'm going to come to your march. What are you going to do in person? That's gonna. Well, that's great. We're gonna use your forehead as a jumbotron so people can see the performances. So that we do need you there. We need you to stand in the front. Okay. Yes, yeah, so so we'll anyway, play your jungle. Anyway, anyway, I don't want to hear tether troll must. Okay, this is a loser musty troll who gets beat up all over the place. Who's extremely jealous of foundational Black Americans. All right, he's so jealous and runs around claiming that he's a black American. He tries to cosplay as us. A little musty child soldier, former child soldier. All right, let's get turned in the building. And we're in here heavy. Um, by the way, rallyforreparations.com. We still need everybody to support the Rally for Reparations. Rally, the number four reparations. And Johnny, definitely come on up. Come on up to the Rally for Reparations. Come on up. We, we'd love to have you up. It's going to be a phenomenal event. Hey, how you doing, man? What's up, Turner? What up, bro? Hey, is my shit glitching or am I like the only speaker on this motherfucker? Um, no, no. There's a lot of people speaking. You can't hear people? What happened? Oh, no. I just said I'm the only speaker. I thought I was like privileged and shit. I was like, thank you. No, that's fire, bro. Yeah. Now, where you from, Turner? Uh, I live in Cali. Cool, cool. So what's on your mind? Now I just saw Johnny Somali was in here, so I was like, oh, this is this must be a turn space. So you know I joined up. Oh, oh, so you're a feather tether like I'm him. not really what like part, him. I just think he's of, a interesting What part what part of um Africa did your family flee from, by the way? What do you mean by flee? Flee, flee. They fled from somewhere in Africa. Where what country did they flee from? Well, I wouldn't say flee. I mean, they leave and they go back. You know what I'm saying? But I, like I said, I don't fully. Support... What? Which? Which country? Which country? Like I said, I don't fully support Johnny so much. Which country does your family leave and go back and forth to, sir? Uh, my country go back and forth to um, Eritrea in East Africa. It's a nice little. Country. Okay. Why? Why were you so ashamed to say that? I sir? wasn't ashamed. Should... It was more of just like. You, sh you shouldn't be ashamed of your homeland. Sir. Yo, you wait, really hold up, hold up, hold up. What do you mean I should be ashamed of? Like I said, you shouldn't be ashamed of your homeland. And I and I knew that you were a tether because you know, FBAs don't listen to Johnny Somali. You don't. We don't listen to unfunny, unwitty trolls. We that's not our culture. So only another tether would listen to that. 
You understand? So that's why I knew. Wait, so. my fault, uh, sir. What do you? What's a tether? Okay. Um, do some googling. But but okay, thank you so sure. much. Google it. Google it. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, you can tell by a person's fan base. Foundation of Black Americans. We don't listen to unfunny, lame trolls. That's not a part of our culture. Only other tethers listen to that cornball nonsense. So yeah, you look and and white supremacists. White supremacists like witty, un well non witty, unfunny troll shit. You know, white supremacists like goofy shit like that. We can tell that you know these people are not our our audience. They don't come from us. You did. You're like the butt of the joke to white supremacists, you know. So yeah, you don't. We don't like you in our circles. What's up? I see you over there, Stacy. Only fan, Stacy. Lord, Stacy. I know you're probably in here trying to promote your Only Fans because you know, your 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 page is a little thirsty. Because well, Stacy, let me get you on. I'll, I'll I'll get you a couple of customers. Stacy, hop on. And Stacy's kind of out there. She just kind of babbles and says weird stuff, but she she has her hand up because I think she wants to get a couple of customers for her only fans stacy you want to say something dear you want to promote your, your only fans stacy you want to hop on dear and she has an only fans but her her shape is very weird no disrespect no disrespect but she's very funny built and i don't think she makes that much money on only fans I think she works at Starbucks to supplement her OnlyFans income to do that. Well, Stacey, she's not saying that. Stacey, I was going to give you a shot to really promote your OnlyFans, but you're not saying nothing. Okay. You need some Ozempic to do something with that shape. Um, let's get some, um, let me see. Let's get King Tone in the building. Let's get King Tone. All right. Let's get King Tone in the building, and then we'll get um, Epic. We got a lot of people in here. We got like twelve hundred people. King Tone. Hey, what up, though? What up, though? Detroit in the building. What's happening? Most definitely. Hey, man. I just um. So I'm FBA, but I also consider yeah. myself a Pan African. So okay. I don't know if you. I don't know that this is like the topic of the group, and I don't know if you said this already, but. Do you consider those two things to be like problematic to be at the same time? No, my my question. No, it, it's no, no, no. It's not problematic because your lineage is your lineage. No matter what, if you are a crackhead, if you come from an FBA lineage, that's your lineage. So my question is, um, what has Pan Africanist groups? What have they actually accomplished? So that's the question. Could you give some examples of people accomplishing some type of Pan-Africanism? Well, me, to be honest, I don't, I don't really know a whole lot of history of Pan-Africanist groups, but I do see the benefits in, the, you know, in different, different black people from all over the world just kind of getting on code and supporting each other. You know, and I, I've experienced that, that, you know, in some ways, you know, on my journey in life. So that's why probably why I lean more towards that. But I can't, I can't say I know much history about it, though. Like, I can't. I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Well, th thank you so much. Well, people say they got a personal journey. Well, usually that means they done, you know, went somewhere and got with a chick from Jamaica, got with some, got with a chick somewhere. Okay. Because usually that's what Pan-Africanism kind of extends. You go date somebody from another country, and that's the Pan-Africanism. Eric, what's up, man? Or Epic, not Eric, Epic. Yo, Epic, hop on. Tariq, uh, can you get me? Uh -oh. I can hear you, sir. What's up, Epic? Thank you. Thank you for if you can hear me. I'm on IPC. I'm not on the phone. So can I ask you something? I've realized how you've greeted those guys. You, you realize what? I realize what. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I can go ahead. I mean, the way those guys came through. I mean, that girl who you just created and the other guy from Ghana was defending her. 
do you have some okay. predetermined predetermined thought about what someone is going to say or their perception and how you are going to process it i mean the truth if someone says an opinion and maybe that does not match up to your expectation does that mean they are wrong well opinions you and know. lies are two different i don't let people lie you're not going to lie especially lie on me if a person lies on me, we're going to have to shut the conversation down and bring it back to truth. Um, we don't do that. I know in your culture, a lot of people just sit around lying and lying is normalized. We don't do that in foundational black American culture. This is how we maintain integrity. If people are lying, we have to shut things down and stop the lies and then bring truth to power. You see how that works? Yeah, I get that. Um, personally, I'm a black, black African, I'm a Kenyan, you know, and I'm you proud of any black movement. I don't support it. You know, what I'm trying to say is the You're opposite of lying is the truth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, the opposite of lying is truth, right? All right. So, like, if someone does not tell what in your perception think is the truth does that mean they are lying sounds like no, 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 a predetermined no. no 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 so a lie is a lie when you say something that you know is wrong and you know it's false that's called lying there's no misinterpretation uh, the woman called up yeah. lying she called up lying she told several lies and i yeah, stopped yeah, her from i lying. agree i'm not a I'm not a misogynist, of course, I would call a lie a lie. But that other guy who came to defend that lady, I think he had an open mind. Um, well, he just started. I'm guessing. He got, he, got musty, he got musty mad and just started kind of babbling. I didn't get him out of here. So he just, he kind of had a temper tantrum and he thought he was going to control the dictation of the conversation and that just didn't work. But thank you so much, Epic. Yeah. It's, 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 Thank you, thank you. You're, you're taking a long time to get your sentences out, and um, you know, you know, the tethers like to try to justify lying. There is no justifying lying, guys. That's what the tethers you see. Y'all so used to lying. Y'all come from these cultures where you don't really have anything, so the only thing you have are your lies, and lying has become normalized. You got to come up by any means necessary and lying and scheming, so be it. And we don't do that. That's that's not how we do business. We don't get down like that. You dig? We do not get down like that. I, I don't. We don't want y'all to bring that mentality over here where that normalized lying, everything out your mouth is a damn lie. Then y'all want to project that onto us. You niggas are scamming. When we do business, y'all try to project this stuff. No, we don't. We don't do that. We don't do that. We got to have integrity with whatever we do. Let's get um, calcite. Let's get calcite in the building, and then let's get um, he who remains, either calcite or he who remains. What's up, Torrain? I saw Torrain. Did I? I'm in Atlanta. I could have swore I saw you at the mall in Atlanta today. Torrain, were you at the Linux mall today? I could have swore I saw somebody look just like you at the Linux mall today in Atlanta. Um, he he who remains. Yo, what's up, Flex? What's happening? I'm good, man. How good, are you? Good, man? good. Good to speak with you tonight. Uh, I wanted to say, uh, in answer to the question, what have Pan-Africanist groups accomplished? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, in mm. terms of paradigm shifting with international culture, it's been foundational black Americans that have always moved the needle. And I do want to say yes. that uh, <clears throat> I'm a Gen Xer. My mother and father were from the silent generation. And I would always wonder when I would ask the question about Africa, people that are older, that are foundational black Americans would always say, I didn't leave anything in Africa. I don't know anything mm. about that. And I used to always wonder, like, why are they saying that? You know, why are they making these these comments? And after becoming more informed and listening to you, now I totally understand why. So I yes. just want to say thank you, brother. Appreciate everything you do. Much respect, brother. Appreciate that. 
Let's get um, B E B Timmy. Ebi Timmy. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ebi Timmy. Yeah. I really think that I'm an African here in Nigeria, and on my own perspective, I feel like Pan Africans have not really achieved much because. They have uh, or have Hello. They have or have not achieved much. They have not achieved much. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because of their still ethnic nationalities within themselves, and most Africans still this. Uh, how would I put it? Like they, we consider the white people to be like racist. But also here in Africa, too, we have such things within us, so it doesn't let us to attain our full, our full gift as Africans and as Pan Africans. Yeah, and that's our own view. There Thank you, you very much for this podcast. You know, Th- Thank us. you, brother Ebitimi. Shout out to you, brother. All right, that's our good brother from Nigeria, Ebitimi. All right, let's get Phil in the building. I couldn't understand the shit that Ebitimi said, but shout out to Ebitimi. I couldn't understand nothing. Did y'all make out what he said? Um, Phil? Hey, hey, Tariq. It's, yeah, it's Phil. Um, What's up, Phil? How are you? I am uh, doing all right. It's a, it's a good night. I'm just driving around. So, um, yeah, I, so I just to let you know, like, I'm Ethiopian, right? I'm, like, first generation okay. American. Um, and like, I, I just really want to understand like what your, what your like problem. Yeah. I don't want to call it a problem, but like, what, what's your issue with like, you know, black people from Africa and even like specifically East Africa, like what is like the Nothing. Main problem? Nothing. Nothing. You're out of sight, out of mind. I literally don't think about you. You're not one problem yeah. at all. Yeah, you, why would you be? Why would you be a problem? It's it's like the tether thing. I, I, I like you know what I mean. It's like the, the right the tether thing. It's like we're different from you guys. No, in, you being from East Africa doesn't make you a tether. Yeah, a tether is okay. based on an action, and so it's based on something you do. Okay, and if you undermine it, that makes you a tether. Tethers right. are a problem. East Africans are. Not so and there are a lot of tethers who do happen to come like, from East Africa. You what? You what now? What? What can? Go ahead, brother. What now? I don't have you muted, Phil. Um, Phil. Well, I have a problem with your phone. Your phone, y'all phone never works. Y'all, your phone's always going in and out. Phil, I, I don't have you muted, sir. What's on your mind, Phil? Now you say, what what, what problem do we have with you? We don't have a problem with you, sir. What what can, what can would I do that would make me a tether? Um, come over here and try to undermine foundational black Americans or show any form of disrespect yeah. to foundational black Okay, so... So okay, so just to understand you, if um, if I were to start a business and I only hire people from my tribe, would that make it be a problem? Not really, because people hire folks they know, you know. Because I, yeah. I hire, you know, I, I hire people from L.A. and people from my community, so I make sure that they're taken care of, and then when I make sure they're taken care of, then we get other people, you know. So there's nothing I wrong see. with that. People look out for their group. But but I the see. problem is you okay. have people trying to undermine us. See, that's when we don't do that. We don't go undermining people. A lot of people come over from parts of Africa and the Caribbean and come among us and they do things to undermine us while they benefit off of us, while they get things that we help them fight for or we fight for things for them. And then there's a, a lot of disrespect. <laughs> so that's a problem. What happens is y'all bring over, unfortunately, some of the tribalistic mindset that you have there. You bring that here and trying to use that tribalistic stuff on us is tethering. So you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. OK. Uh, 
um, you, you, you made a, you, it makes a lot more sense now. Uh, thanks for all that. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, brother. All yeah. right. All right. Let me see. We got a lot of people in here tonight. We got a lot of people in here tonight. Let's get um Charles. Charles, your lunch is ready. Go ahead, Charles. Brother Charles. All right, then we get um Matro. Matro wants to get in, but he's from Canada. I don't know what you gotta say. Um Matro, you keep raising your hand. Matro, what's up, man? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Matro? Yeah, uh, just a quick question. Um, just wanted you to expand on the definition of FBA because I heard you last week. You were talking to, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but you, you guys were talking about Drake and you were mentioning about mm -hmm. the fact that he is not an FBA person, but I thought FBA was based off of lineage because Drake is father is African American. That for that makes him mm -hmm. half FBA. That, that, am I getting that wrong, Gore? Mm -hmm. Um, but um, he um is from another country, right? See. So then, if you're, let's say, I'm just bringing out an example. Let's say your kids decide to live in Japan and they had kids out there. Would that make them non FBA now? Um, they would not be of the lineage. For example, well, now it would not be of the like. Let me give you an example. I'm a foundational black American. I got lineage that goes to Nigeria or the West Africa, so to speak, where Nigeria is now. Um, Nigeria didn't exist thousands of years ago or whenever they got my lineage there. Now, even though my lineage goes to that part of West Africa, I can't go to Nigeria and claim to be a part of their immediate lineage. You understand? I can't be a part of that because the nationality is different. I got to try to immigrate there. You understand? Well, to be Drake, to be fair, Nigeria Drake, didn't exist when you were, when your ancestors were there. So. Right, right. Exactly. But Nigeria has a lot of lineage based um, things as far as tribes and all of this stuff. But that doesn't matter. I'm not a part of any of those tribes. Even though if you go to Ancestry.com and all of that stuff, it'll say that, okay, you came from the Igbo tribe. You came from this tribe. If I go over there and try to say, hey, look, Ancestry said I'm part of the Igbo tribe. They're like, ah, nah, nigga, but you left. So they're not going to let me be down. But you left. You ain't a part of it no more. You understand? So when you go to another country and then you kind of have to immigrate back, just like with the Liberians, they try to play the whole thing with the Liberians. But yeah, when that lineage, when you go to another place, you have another ethnogenesis. Drake had an ethnogenesis, okay? He's Canadian. Even his, his mannerisms, his voice, and all of that, he had, he had an ethnogenesis, you see, because he left. When you stay on the land and you never left from that land, you, you're still part of that lineage. But Drake is a Canadian, even though his dad is a foundational black American. Drake is Canadian. So then what about yes. what about Nipsey Hussle? Um, Nipsey, that brother, he's part FBA and he stayed on the land. His mom stayed on the land. He was he's from the land. He was born here. So even though his father is Eritrean, he's more FBA uh -huh. than his Drake. Mama, his mom right. His mama stayed here. He was born here. Nipsey was born here. You see? He's foundation black America. Yeah, but if if, if uh, let's say a Somali person was born in America, they wouldn't be FBA, right? It doesn't matter where you're born; it's your lineage that counts. Right. So that's that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to understand: is it based off of lineage or is it just based off of culture? Because a Somali person that grew up in Compton, or in this case, an Eritrean, it's, can be an FBA. It's lineage, it's lineage, culture, and nationality. See, all of that plays into it. Like a Somalian. If you if your parents are from Somalia and you they came and anchored you here, you, you're still Somalian. You're just a Somalian anchor baby. You know your lineage doesn't really go here to America. You see, you see how that works. But then th in that case, Nipsey Hussle is still an Eritrean. He's not an FBA. No, no, because he was born here, and his mom is FBA. 
See? So you just, okay, well then, you're going back to the lineage part. That makes Drake an FBA because his lineage is FBA too. But he was born in Canada. But FBA is not based off of where you're born. It's based off of lineage. So, you know, that's why the librarians are trying to claim it. But really, it's hard to fact check the, the librarians. But with Drake, you can easily fact check that. You know his father was born in America. Therefore, that makes him an FBA. No, he, he has FBA lineage, but he's not of this land. He was not born on this soil. So he had to immigrate here. You see? He had to he had to immigrate here himself. You see? He had to immigrate here. I do if you had an ethnogenesis. If you had to immigrate here, you had an ethno ethnogenesis. No, that's you understand? No, I I understand, but that's why I'm trying to bring up the argument of if you had kids outside of this country, would that make them non FBA? Because I don't think that would make them a non FBA, but you seem to think that would make them non FBA. No. Uh, it depends on who I have the kid by. But you're FBA, so your kids are still going to be FBA. It doesn't matter where they're born. They're going to have FBA lineage. They're going to have FBA lineage. If I go to Korea and have a baby with a Korean woman and the baby's born in Korea, technically that baby is not FBA. The baby's going to have FBA lineage, but that's not going to be an FBA baby. That baby's going to have to immigrate over here. So you're not FBA. If you got to immigrate here, you're not FBA. I feel like this is kind of yeah. like the one drop rule. Like you're you're implementing the one drop rule when it comes to FBA. No, it's, like, it's just like other ethnic tribes, like Native American tribes. Um, you can't be a chief of a certain tribe if you don't have lineages that goes to both of the tribes and the land. Um, bloodline and land. That's why they say blood and soil. Uh, that blood and soil is a real thing. But um, you being on that land and you having the bloodline is very important. All of that has to factor in, sir. But you, you understand? But you, but you can claim native, uh, you know, like checks and stuff like that. Even if you're a percentage, you, you don't have to be fully native. No, 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 no. Some of how those you got the whole bunch of five dollar Indians doing all types of janky shit. But a lot of the Native American tribes, in order to be a chief in some of those tribes, both sides of the family had to come from the lineage of that tribe. Um, for example, the Seminoles, um, there was a guy named Osceola. He couldn't be one of the main chiefs of the Seminoles because um, he had half white lineage. It was some real jank stuff going on. So. Um, certain tribes and certain ethnic groups, they're real funny style about the lineage. Hell, even certain, um, the mafia, and, and they're not a, an ethnic group, but I, I give you an example. They are, in order to be a made man, you have to have both bloodlines tracing back to Sicily, to Italy, something like that. Because uh, um, they can't have people who are shot callers with dual allegiances. So this is why we talk about having dual allegiances in foundational Black American culture. If a person has um, a foreign lineage and an FBA lineage, their leadership has to be questioned because they have dual allegiances and they might have an allegiance to uh, an oppositional ethnic group that might try to undermine us. So all of that factors in when no, you're talking you. about I agree you, you know what I'm saying? I agree with you 100%. That's why I brought up the you're argument. So, you're so, and, and, and by the way, you're Somalian, right? I'm Somalian, yeah. Now, you know this better than anybody, sir. You know how those tribal groups are over there in Somalia. You know how those groups are when it comes to people belonging to different ethnic tribes. You know they have the same types of rules. 100%. Of how the, right. So it's, you already know. It's, it's based off of your father's lineage. You, you, you like right. it doesn't matter what your mother is. It's you are what your father is. So even if, mm. like, let's say that Somali person married a, a white woman, that Somali person can still claim that clan. But if if uh, if a uh, white man marries a Somali uh, woman, uh, he's just considered a white man at that point, even though he's half black, half Somali. He's just considered a white right. man. And 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 I've seen some. Um, West African people sit here and look at anchor babies over here who got um, half FBA lineage 
and have like West African lineage, they don't even consider them West African no more. They're like, well, you're, you're an Akata now. I've actually heard that yep. from some of the people. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're an Akata now. You were born over there, and you're not one of us no more. They're real big on that over there. No, you understand? It's, so? it's the same thing with East Africans. You know, they, they have a terms. Uh, you're talking about the Jarer part, but there's terms for right. Somalis and East Africans that were born in the West. They call them Dakan Ellis, you know, certain stuff like that, derogatory stuff. Uh, Right, right. If they have, if they have a lineage of ours over here, yeah. they disown them over there. No, no, I'm not, they don't give. I'm not talking about lineage. Yeah. I'm talking about like if they were straight up born there. Even if they were born by two Somali parents, they're still looked at in a negative connotation. Right, I did, exactly. Especially if it's half and half lineage. Especially, many of those East African countries will say, "Hey, they're not a part of us no more." They'll pull that, even though the 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 lineage goes there. They're like, ah, not really, no more. It's, it's you different now. You did so, that, that, so yeah. Same, so that's why same thing with Drake. Same thing with Drake. No, but that, no, but that's why I brought up Nipsey Hustle. I'm like, you got to You can't go, you know, fifty fifty on it. If you're not Drake accepting Drake, Drake, you can't accept no, no, Nipsey no. Hustle. That's all I'm saying. Oh uh, no, 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 because Nipsey was born here by an Eritrean father. Uh huh. Not but by an FBA father. mother. But with an FBA mother, well, I know, but it's fifty fifty. It's 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 not a hundred percent. It has to, the lineage has to go no, both ways was, for them to be fully FBA because no, no, then no, they're gonna no, have different. You, you don't. No no no, 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 no. That's you using Somali rules. We don't use Somali rules here. He has an FBA mother. He's born on FBA land. He's FBA too, and he's part of Retrian. You know that's fine. But you know we consider him my FBA brother. That was and that's that was my guy. That's my guy. No, but you and you, he respect, you you just brought up the fact that. There's question, there's questionable, you know, loyalties when you have the 50-50 thing going on. And so you, you uh, never really with, know, Nipsey Hussle, which way he's going to go when it comes to that loyalty stuff. We, we did what? You, you, like, you never know. Like, is he more loyal to his Eritrean side or to his FBA side? You don't know. Whereas a person who has parents that are FBA did, on both no. sides, you don't have to question their loyalty. You know, I, I, I knew Nipsey personally. You know that, right? No, but I'm, I'm just giving you him as an example. I know him know what his allegiance was. Nipsey was a rider for the community, for, for black people here. He was a rider. That was my guy. He was a rider, for real, for real. He was a rider for us. So he had a 100% loyalty to his foundation of black American lineage and the black people here. And that was a 100% rider. Drake, not so much. But you don't know him personally, so how would you know he's not a rider? Uh, we see his get down. And plus, he's Canadian. And we've seen some of the stuff Drake has done. So Drake, the... Uh, Drake is cool. I don't know him personally, but we've seen some of the stuff that he's done publicly. Yeah, Drake is Canadian. All I'm right. Just, I'm just saying. I, I feel like you're going halfway <laughs> with Canadian. his FBA stuff. Like, I like Drake. No, 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 no. You, you, it, it is what it I, is. I, Drake, I respect the FBA. I, I want FBA. I want FBA. Like, but you're talking about a Canadian citizen. He's a Canadian no, guy. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm not saying you have to accept yeah, you, yeah, Drake. Simple. I'm just saying you have to hold down the line. You can't go halfway just because you personally knew a person whoever is an fba fully 100 percent, you accept them whoever is 50 50 you gotta have a like you gotta look you have to have two but eyes you on have to, yeah but you can't compare drake and nipsey drake wasn't born here drake is canadian no you but, keep trying to crowbar you keep trying to crowbar comparison no but it doesn't matter where you're born if a somali is born yes, in america that no, doesn't no, make no. him fba even no, if he's no black. no no no, 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 you can't give us Somali rules, dude. No, 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 you, we don't do Somali rules. No, okay, rules. let's say Eritrean. You can't say an Eritrean is born in America, therefore dude. he's an FBA. Um, if he has an FBA mother, yeah. So you just have to have one FBA parent and be born in America, and you're 100% FBA. Is that the, is that mm -hmm. the rule? You're an FBA. If you're born here, you got an FBA parent? Yeah, you're FBA. If you're born on this soil in America... With to an FBA parent, you considered an FBA. You understand? What? Now you're in Can now you're in Canada, right? I'm in America. No, 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 no. I kind of hear a Canadian accent there too. No, I, I'm I'm from Canada, yeah, but I'm I'm in America right now. There, there we go. Yeah, there. There we go. Now, but, no one. I'm like, why is it like caping for Drake so hard? That's not, that's yeah. not really the reason why I'm caping for Drake. Uh, I, I'm more it. so I'm questioning yeah, FBA like loyalty here. 
Oh, yeah. Because I, I feel, and, you know, I feel like Nipsey Hussle and Drake are more kind of in the same kind of attitude. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. I, I'm talking no, lineage-wise. I'm not talking about who's repping FBA more. I know Nipsey Hussle's repping no. FBA more, but I'm sticking from a lineage perspective. No. They're both the same. Well, listen, listen. And as far as any ethnic group, there's going to be a couple of outliers that are somewhat questionable that need special attention. You understand? When people are, this might be people born with to military parents, there's always going to be some kind of outlier. You, you, you understand? If somebody's deployed somewhere and they're born on a military base, there's going to be an outlier here or there. But that doesn't dictate the vast majority of foundation of Black Americans being born on this land and our lineage going back to the founding of this land. That doesn't change that. A couple of outliers don't mean anything. Um, and also, you know that, and, and as part of, part, oh, excuse me, part of Somali culture, you got certain situations where people are born in a refugee camp in another country, but they're Somali, but they're part of this tribe, and there's, there's different little outliers, but your lineage is your lineage. That's not nothing to really negotiate. That's your lineage is your lineage, especially if you're born on this land. And you didn't immigrate here. When you start having to immigrate here, that's when it gets murky and questionable. You, you see, see how that works? Yeah. No. I. I the, the thing is, uh, and most of us, and most of us don't have to immigrate here Dr from somewhere. The thing about Drake is he's one generation removed from being FBA. It's not like Liberians. Like like Liberians, you can make a case. Hey, look, you guys were mm -hmm. you you're, you're gone. Long enough, we don't know if you're really FBA. There's no receipts. How can we prove it? Like, there's actually a receipt that can prove Drake is one generation removed from FBA. So for you to say he has he's not FBA, FBA it's kind of like, like, who are you to say he's not FBA? Because it's not... Because he has FBA, because he had to immigrate here. And Foundation no, of Black Americans... I'm talking about his lineage. I'm not talking about where he right. was... Because I said, I made the, right. ar he, I made the argument. If, if a FBA yeah, listen, has a, a... Listen, I have West African lineage, but I ain't West African. Okay. Yeah, your West African lineage dates back 500 years. That's even further than Liberia. Right, right. right. So yeah, there's no date or whatever. I, I, I'm not West African. Okay. Yeah. Well, we we we, we, we wouldn't have the receipt for it. Like even if that right. was the case, like how how can we prove you're West African? Yeah. Well, my DNA says that I'm somewhere. I got some West African DNA somewhere. But does it give you an exact location? Somewhere in West Africa, because those countries don't exist no more. You know, so they can't really be that accurate because the countries don't exist no more. You can't say what landmass or what specific tribal group, because those tribal groups were nomadic. They moved all exactly. over the place. But you, you understand? But, but you can prove your FBA because you can date back almost a century. Yes. I remember you saying you can date back a oh, century. Oh, no, I, I can date back three centuries, dude. Exactly. On paper, on paper. So yeah, and, my lineage, and, both sides of my family, so can, go, I'm, a, I'm, I'm full FBA, 100% both sides, and never immigrated to or from anywhere. You see? And so is Drake. He can prove the same thing. No, Drake had to... Okay, you. Okay, I didn't say this about 20 times. He's immigrated. He immigrated here. So you keep saying, but... He FBA too. That doesn't. Well, he immigrated here, so not no, but really. You, you, you're talking about immigration. I'm talking about lineage. His okay, lineage talk, is FBA. Okay, you, you're talking in circles. You, you're saying the same thing over and over again. Okay, all right. You're just saying the same thing over and over. I'm not gonna keep repeating the same shit now. All right. All right. He's just saying the same thing over and over again. But the, the, he's really trying to make Drake. Drake immigrated here. Okay. So yeah. So he had an ethnogenesis up in Canada. Drake is Canadian. Yeah. Sandra, what's up, Sandra? Hi. Um, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on the time you guys are at. Um, hi, hi, Tarif, and hi, hello, everyone. Uh, oh, well, hello, Howard. I'm all right. Thank you. Um it is really my first time to participate in in your space, and um, I'm finding it interesting so far. And um, I just wanted to to talk on Pan Africanism. Yes, now Sandra, where are you from, by the way? Um, I'm in Canada. Are you from Canada too? Yeah. 
<laughs> not a Canadian. Uh, Canada by way of what? By way of... Um, I am Canadian. Kenya? I'm Canadian. Ghana Ghanaian? No. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. No, sweetie, sweetie. no, no. What part of Africa did they go to before they went to Canada? Um, I actually um, moved to Canada from the uh, Republic of Democratic Republic of the Congo. So, Congo, there you go. Yes, I'm from the there central um, central part of Africa, and I'm so proud okay. of where I come from. And uh, yes, indeed. I'm proud to be African as well, African Canadian. Okay. So, yes, I just wanted to uh, speak on pan um, pan Africanism. Um, pan Africanism. Uh, movements that are um, in Africa with the goal to eliminate uh, colonialism and to kind of um, stop the Western power over African, African economy, I believe, and African leadership. So um, in regards to the subject here that says, what have an Africanist group accomplished? I would say there's still um, baby baby movements. We need to give them time. Uh, we all know that African countries were colonized for many, many, many years. And now most of the Western powers do have power and control over um, African countries. So that's why the um, Pan-Africanism, that the movements are fighting so hard to um, to kind of eliminate all of those um, the powers that the westerns uh, um, the western powers have over Africa, so um, I think the idea originated from um, from Gaddafi, who had this idea of uniting Africa, having one currency, and um, also the Pan Africanist. What they are thinking is to not have borders in Africa. Uh, to have Africans unite all of African countries to just be one as a continent and uh, to have uh, one leadership and then to have one uh, currency. So uh, these are movements that really are focused into Africans appreciating Africa, loving Africa, working for Africa and creating um, stronger um, economic system in Africa, education and all of that. So I think they're doing okay. a good job, like they're really working hard, but it's going to take them time. And recently there was a movement in Zambia where um, the Africanists were, um, they, they, I think they marched because they want all the borders to be like just open so that Africans can just go everywhere they want and to just be okay. free in Africa. So we need to give them time and I think they're doing a good job. So I just wanted to add on that. <laughs> okay, because that, that's kind of an ideology. How come you don't think they've accomplished like none of that at all? Like none of the borders are open. Um, even within the countries themselves, the tribal groups are still very divisive towards each other. There's not really a camaraderie within the countries themselves. So why do you think they have not um, completed any form of the open border policy, even within the nations themselves? Uh, Tariq, look, Africa, as I said earlier, um, most of the all the African countries were colonized for many many years, and I said that the Western powers do have power over African countries. So it's gonna take a long time because most of the African leaders are still kind of working for the Westerns. So it requires them to understand that we don't need the Western powers to to control Africa. So it will take time for those leaders to understand that and start working for African for their countries and for their people instead of working for the, the, the Western powers, working for uh, USA, working for China, China, working for Canada. So those leaders have to come to that understanding that we don't need them. We need ourselves. We need to strengthen our economy. We need to educate our people so they can know how to build their communities so they can become good leaders who are not expecting um, the Western powers to come and tell them what to do. So it's going right, to take right. time. As I said, it's still a baby movement, but let's give them time. And I think they'll do great things in the future. Now, why do you think they, there are a lot of people who are on the Pan-Africanist thing? They A lot of them really come to us, foundational Black Americans, to try to really shame us into 
being a part of it. It's always us. They never go to the Caribbeans. They never go to the South Americans. It's always you foundational black Americans. Y'all need to really get on top of this. Why do you think so much focus is on us to promote Pan-Africanism? But I think that should be something that should give you pride. Uh, you should be proud of because if they're coming to you, that means they've seen something in you. Maybe they've seen that y your help will be really needed and then that you can do something. So I think it's something that you need to take pride in. So I don't personally know what they come to you guys for, but I think it's something to take pride in. And if you guys can help one way or the other, because at the end of the day, whether you are American you, you came from Africa many, many years ago or your lineage is in Africa, you are still Africa because we also know that even the white people themselves came from Africa. They originated from Africa because humanity started in Africa. So be, whether you are blue, you are yellow, you are Chinese, you are Indian, you are, you are whatever, you are, your origin is in Africa. So if they come to you, that means that they know that you're one of us and you're going to help unite Africa. So that's why I so, my answer. So then if that's the case, how come Foundation of Black Americans have such a hard time getting dual citizenship over there and we can't get citizenship unless we have a big bag of money we drop off there? Why, why is that? I don't think that's, uh, that's, I don't think that's, that's, uh, that's right to say because um, I've seen a lot of um, Americans that have gone to Africa and they've gotten you know, African citizenships and they've gotten African passports and even um, uh, Hollywood stars or even rap people and whatnot. So Africans are very easy they people. Bring and, money. Mm -hmm. They have to bring money, dear. They have to bring a lot of money, bam. Mm -mm. You have to go over and start a business. They, they got to look in your bank accounts. They got to see how much money you got. We got to go over there with money. You just proved it by saying rappers and all the, yeah, if you have money, if you're a rapper or a superstar with money, Stevie Wonder, yeah, they gave him citizenship. He has money. When you drop a bag off, why do we have to drop off? We got to pay you to give us citizenship if that's our family. Why? Well, because we know that at the end of the day, money is important. We need money for everything. So even when you need a passport here in Canada, in America, you need to pay for it. Even though you are Canadian, you are American. So money is important. Recently, just recently, we saw Harry and uh, and his wife, Megan, went there claiming that she has some kind of origin to Africa, 43% or whatnot. And she was well welcomed and whatnot, which some people are against and some people are for. So you can come to Africa. It's it homeland to everybody who wants to come to Africa. We Africans yeah. are really... Yeah, go ahead, please. And yeah, they were kind of dissing her. They were, they were kind of dissing uh, Megan Markle. They were kind of dumping on her, talking about they don't like how she dressed. And then they threw us under the bus. They're like, yeah, we don't, those black Americans dress like that. We don't dress naked like this. They kind of threw her and us under the bus, ma'am. So we, we don't want to do that now. We got to gotta tell the truth. But thank, thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is this, okay, she's, she's saying stuff that ain't true, all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm about to stop that. See, people start saying things that ain't true. Oh, no, you can go over there. No, you know, you got to bring a bag to go over there. They're not letting us over there with no bag. Oh, they're welcome making market with open arms. No, really? What was that? Who was that woman who was shitting on us? And Megan Markle talking about she was dressed naked and I don't like the way she dressed. Man, please. Uh... See, and, and, and the, the woman who called, she just gave a bunch of cliches and fantasies. One day it's going to take time. Okay. Could I? You uh, can't. Sh Hold on. Oh, wait, who's this? Who's this? Uh, they, they call me Brown Dog. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, go ahead, Brown. Uh, well, hold on. Let me finish what I'm saying. I get you on. But yeah, um, yeah, man. No, you know, people say that type of stuff and are very hostile. When we go over there. Yeah, the first lady of Nigeria. Okay, shout out to Macau. Yeah, the first lady of Nigeria. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that was the first lady. My brother Macau just told me that. Yeah, the first lady of Nigeria shitted on Meghan Markle. Yeah. I thought it was like a random politician. I didn't realize it was the first lady. Yeah, they are very vitriolic towards us, dude. But but I digress. Um, Brown. Yeah, brown, brown dot. <laughs> Can you can you hear me? Brown, I can hear you. Are you Canadian too? 
No, no, no. I'm I'm from East Africa, but I, I live in South Africa oh. right now. Okay. What part of East Africa are you from? Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya. Kenya. Okay, there you go. What's on your mind? Um, well, I, I I've noticed the conversation has revolved now back to uh, Pan Africanism. But before we go there, I, I just want to confirm. So the conversation you were having with the Somali guy, being FBA is about uh, lineage, nationality, and politics, right? All three of those. That would quite no, I won't. I wouldn't say politics, just lineage and nationality, being a foundational black American. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think I think it's important. I mean, let me just say, I, I don't have a problem with uh, the FBA movement. I think it's necessary for uh, black people to in America to define themselves as a distinct group. Because um, I've often said that sometimes, uh, as a diaspora, we kind of treat uh, the black American culture like a, like a buffet, like a cultural buffet, where everyone can come right. and eat from it, and then they don't acknowledge or respect the people who created the, the food in the first place, if you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Right. As a, as a Pan-Africanist, Pan-Africanism is about building an African civilization. And I believe that that's the future of wherever you see black people on the planet. That's what oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's that's just go. What... Now we let... before, before we get into the Wakanda Akon city, the question <laughs> is, what, has, what have they accomplished in past tense? What have they done already? What have they done? to create this Akon city Wakanda? What has been done with Pan-Africanism? Well, a, a civilization is not a Wakanda. It's not a United States of Africa. It's a, for example, the Western world is a civilization. It's composed of different- Okay, explain it, um, explain no, I'm to explain it. I'm trying to explain to you explain what it is. A civilization, okay. and then I'll try to explain what, you know, what we've accomplished. Okay. No, because no, 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 you're just talking in circles. We don't want to do that. This is real simple. What is Pan-Africanists and Pan-Africanist Pan groups, what have they accomplished with all of this Pan-Africanism that's okay. been going on for, what, a century or so? What has been accomplished? What can people say, hey, look, this is what Pan-Africanism has done so far. Go. Okay. I think the first thing that we've done is we've been able to piece back the history of African people. The whole Afrocentric movement, all the scholars were Pan-Africanists. And the lens that they used to interpret our history was a Pan-African lens. And without them, we wouldn't have a knowledge of self. We wouldn't know where we... And many of those people were black Americans, Pan-Africanist scholars. Right. That's, that's number one. Num number right. I agree with that. Okay. N number two, when it comes to the policies and the structure of the African continent, the establishment of the African Union, although it has, you know, its flaws, has helped to foster integration between many African countries, creating trade routes, creating systems of commerce that have been tried and tested that will work time and time again. We have made developments towards uh, fostering diaspora unity, creating uh, communities in different parts of the, the world that are for the diaspora. And a good example of not this... Really, not really, because the African Union, they don't have us in it and they kicked Haiti out. But go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. In 2001, the African Union was the first, to my knowledge, on the public stage to take reparations to the table. For black Americans in 2001 at the Durban Summit, where they invited Minister Farrakhan, where they invited all sorts of people who I think you would say are somewhat credible in the diaspora community, black Americans, for example, Caribbean leaders. I mean, these are these are important steps. Um, let me try take, and think uh, what else Take reparations to the table as far as what? What did they say mm -hmm. about who should get reparations? Because we've been talking about reparations for the longest. So take it to the table as far as who paying what? See. Well, I, I think if I remember correctly, Just to say. The, the, yeah, so there was a continental discussion, there was a black American discussion, and then there was a Caribbean discussion. So this was the early stages of reparations. And the, the foundation, uh, foundational periods was well, establishing whether or not it should be given and how much should be given. I don't remember the amount, but I remember that the 34 nations that were there, all African nations voted in favor of reparations. And the foreign nations that were invited to the conference voted against reparations. So I'm, I'm trying to lay a base here in terms of what they've been doing, because the work needs to be done in levels, right? You're not just going to uni unify Africa in one stage. You have to get the knowledge right. Then we have to get the philosophy right and the politics right. And then we have to get the technology and the commerce. And that's what's happening right now with these revolutions. Uh, Zimbabwe just came out with a, a, a currency that's backed by the gold. You know, uh, we know what's happening in Burkina Faso and Mali and Niger and how they've taken out the French and the military bases. Okay. Um, these are the kind of things that are being implemented right now that come from Pan-Africanism. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, brother. All right. 
but basically one-sided, like Foundation of Black Americans um, basically got black consciousness popping. And my guys telling me they um, over there in Africa, they're not really developing they're not really developing anything like that. They haven't developed a comprehensive plan for nation building. They they haven't really developed that. This it's kind of pie in the sky. That has not been developed. See, a lot of people are talking very idealistically about what should happen, woulda, shoulda, coulda, and all of that, but they haven't developed no comprehensive plan. No, they haven't. Sincere love, the God. Hey, what's going on, Sarit? What's going on, man? How are you, fam? Doing all right, man. Pretty late over here, man. But I just happened to wake up and see that you was on. So good, good to chop it up with you. Yes, indeed. But um, yeah, Pan Africanism, man, um, basically has been a failure because, like you've pointed out and we've pointed out, you know, for a long time, it's been very one sided. Um. Pan-Africanism was basically created by a foundation of Black Americans, and we would we have been the only ones really upholding it as a group. You know, you have individuals throughout the diaspora who have been riders and try to make moves or whatever the case may be. But as a group, we're really the only ones that have that mindset just, just baked into our culture. You know what I'm saying? We just see Black people, no matter where they're from, as being, you know, connected to us somehow, you know what I mean? For a long time, at least anyway, you know, the delineation movement has started to shift that a bit. But I always point out because, you know, I'm a hip hop artist and, uh, you know, my music oftentimes gets labeled as conscious hip hop or whatever. And so I'll get booked to do shows at a lot of Pan-African events. And, you know, me and my brother RP, we show up at these events and we do these shows or whatever. But one thing I always notice, there's never no Africans at the Pan African events, wow. There's really wow. no, there's really mo um, not really too many non FBAs at the Pan African events. You'll see some um, Jamaicans who are Rastafarians. You know what I'm saying? That's probably really it besides us. But for the most part, yeah. it's just us there, wait, waving this whole Pan African thing. You know, with the red, black, and green, and all of that. It's really just us. You know what I'm saying? And I told, I spoke wow. to um. Dr. Ma'at about this also, and we all know, you know, she's a Pan-Africanist and yeah. she agrees with me. You know, she does these events. She holds these events. She attends these events way more than I have. And she agreed with me. She like, you're right. You know, they're not there. It's mostly just us. So it's been a one-sided thing. And that's why we don't really see too many tangible accomplishments that we can point to. No doubt. My man, thank you. So and I, are you in, are you here in Atlanta or are you in um, Maryland? I'm in Atlanta. I'm, I'm, um, I'm in Gwinnett, though. I'm in Gwinnett. Oh, cool. yeah. Did you um you hear about the whole water thing out here? The water pipes busting up. Out yeah, here? man. Yeah, yeah. Did they get fixed? Uh, I'm not sure because it's not affecting our side, and so I just Got seen it. I just seen people talking about it on social media, but I don't know the details. Got it. All right, my man. Thank you so much, sincere. Appreciate All it, right. bro. Let's get um sunflower. Then we're gonna get Patrick sunflower. Hello, hi everybody. Thank you for having me on stage. It's been nice listening to mm -hmm. the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an American. I don't live in America. I actually live in Australia, but I'm a Somali. And I, okay. I would have to agree with the last speaker. I think um, as a person who's grown up in a Somali household, who also has, uh, there's quite a few different migrants here from African backgrounds who live in um, Australia. I think Pan-Africanism means something different, I think, to people in Africa and people who grew up probably with like from Africa, I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like with colonialism, um, there's also still a lot of bickering between African nations and often there's just so much to deal with in one African nation that like other than kind of like when you see another black person and you know that, hey, we might face the same struggles, there's not that instant kinship, you know what I mean? And I think that needs to be more acknowledged by other Africans because, yeah. um, you know, realistically, where, whatever country that you come from has a heap of problems or social issues that are going on and, and that are engaging you. Um, I think sometimes having African-American culture 
like I live in Australia, but that's I think that's the, probably the biggest commercial that the U.S. exports, you know, outside to other countries. I think there's kind of like a uh, a lot of people don't know about specific African countries, but then they know about like black people. So I think sometimes yeah. it's easier. Um, and you know, like also just as a consumer, I do love black shows. I think sometimes there is similarities about, you know, what maybe I've experienced or I've come across and whatever's like being portrayed on TV because there's sure like there's not going to be a lot of white shows that are going to try to have that type of discussion as well. So I feel like sometimes it's shared experience against, um, you know, racism or the white establishment, um, which I think happens for everyone wherever you are. But I think this, you know, almost like a kumbaya for Africa, I think is very just like unrealistic because even within Africa, people like really disagree and have very different philosophies. Like just for example, like Ethiopia and Somalia, we're neighboring countries but we're drastically different. So right. I think sometimes it's like, why do why does everybody expect Africans also to just be like like a monolith? That's right. really like, you know, I feel like, yeah, the, Africa is not a monolith. The people on there are not a monolith. What the people want from there, how the people express themselves are not a monolith. And also what's really not taken into consideration is like most Africans, if you've migrated there or if your family is like a second generation or whatever, you're still a migrant compared to right. like a different history of an African-American. And I feel like you can't conflate the two. Like even if a white person still calls you like a nigger, like you're still, it's just a diff, it's coming from a different, it's a place of ignorance from a white person, but you can't confuse the history. So right. that's my two cents. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. People always try to make us the the bearers of Pan-Africanism, and we got to sit here and uphold this global Af African unity when it's not being done there. You, you see, the pressure is always on us to uphold this African unity, but they're not doing it there, and this sister just proved it. And they're not a monolith. They're not even on that there, to be honest. You know, that's that's the long and short of it. So I, I just hate that we always got to get shamed. If we're not sitting up here running around with a red, black and green flag, we ain't keeping it real. And all of the vitriol comes towards us, but not all of those gazillion tribes over there. So that's what we're saying. What's up, Patrick? <clears throat> Hop on, Patrick. What's up, man? Uh, I'm not trying to coal burn. Like, uh, I, I, I do support the. Uh... Oh, slow down, slow down. Oh, God. Okay, you coming in with the white supremacist little code, code burn. These are little white supremacist little slang terms. But go, go ahead, man. No, but you get what I'm saying. Like I'm not trying to glaze anyone, but uh, you are right about the. You were being slick. I I caught that. Okay, I just want you to know, I caught that. My audience might not have caught that. They don't know your little white supremacist code words, but I do. All right, so just to let that, you know, that, I know you. I know your white supremacist code words, but go ahead. Okay, go ahead, man. Yeah, I think you were right. Like, uh, the FBAs, I didn't realize the immigration thing. I lived in Africa for a little bit, and one thing I noticed about Africans when I lived there and some I talked to here is they are honestly, they hate black Americans more than white people, and they will try their best to uh, impress white people to, and like uh, think like this is what they think they think like black Americans are uh, like punies or complain too much and uh, they think America is made of gold and so like they'll like uh, try to suck up more and like uh, try to uh, convince you that like uh, it's not black uh, Africans it's that black Americans like are you know, not oppressed because the white man gives them everything and they want to come to America so bad because they're hungry and they see like people with gold teeth and they're hungry and they're like, you, you guys feed them gold. I've never been to America, but there's beautiful pillows with awesome feathers. And at the same time, they're like telling you, you have to come have money to go to Africa if you want to immigrate here. But like, honestly, look what America does. They put us all, they put black people in debt for college, right? And then they don't even give them a job. They replace them with some African from Africa who has no money. And that's how they incentivize fucking over FBA people. So I just thought that was kind of real. You know, I don't, I don't know what your perspective is on that. 
Patrick, where, where where did your family originate from? Are they from like Ireland or Scotland? Where'd they come from? And when did they immigrate here to the U.S.? Uh, I have some. I'm. How do you like check? Like, do you use like Ancestry.com or some shit? Because I've done that. No. No, I mean your your your, your grandparents. Man, you, you can just talk to your. Yeah, yeah I talk I to mean, my grandparents. Right, they'll tell you when they immigrated or when your great grandparents. It's either your it, grandparents or your. Yeah, it goes back farther than that, right? Like eventually, like you have some like grandparents, grandparents, with grandparents who like came here super early. You know what I mean? But like, how real is that to us? Because there's like so many different generations in between, right? But you, you would know. You yeah, yeah, no, I have some of them for sure that have came here super early. Yes. They're, yeah, but no, a lot of you, a lot of you in the dominant society, your people came after like 1880. So where did your parents or great great grandparents immigrate from? They would know. That's not too far. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. Uh I know uh at different times, mostly from Europe, but some of them were here way before others. You know what I mean? Like uh, we know you're well you, you would know by your last name. Like is it O'Reilly? It's Reed. You My last know. name's Reed. Reed, okay. Ireland. That's that's kind of Yeah, Irish, Irish English name, yeah. Right, right, okay. All right. So do you know when they came? Uh some of them, yeah, for sure. Okay. Some of them okay. came before others, you know what I mean? Because, like, your grandmother's dad's grandmother's grandfather might have came here at one time, and then somewhere along the line, they uh, they bred with somebody who came here later, you know what I mean? Right, right, okay. Um, now, now here's the thing, because, you know, we, we're a foundation of black Americans. We, we, we have a discussion going on with some of our cousins in Africa. You know, we, we're corresponding with them about what's going on. Now, in, in your community, well, those birth rates, man, those birth rates are kind of struggling. Uh, absolutely, what right? Doing? What are y'all doing about them birth rates? Man? We're getting holocausted, man. Like, it's, it's the truth. That's why I tell those African people in Africa when I talk to them on Twitter, because I don't really talk to anyone. I, but I, was, I was in Djibouti for a little bit, like in the army, but I, you know, so I don't keep in touch with any of the people I talk to there. But, like, some of the people from, like, uh, Africa that I talk to, they all think, like, oh, America's, like, gold, and it's, like, the white man's so great. And I'm like, dude, we're getting killed. Like, uh, we don't have any babies. You guys have more babies and there's nothing really gold here. And I don't know. They just think like everyone, uh, like black people in America are pussies and they don't struggle and they think they get police brutality harder. You can know they have kids. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about your birth rate. See, you just flipped it. Back oh yeah, yeah, to no, 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 yeah. Their birth rates are way higher. Our birth rates, we're getting police brutality so hard when they use women to sterilize us. You know what I mean? The court system. So our our you, birth rates are dying. You get, You're right. Police brutality? How? What? What? What, what, by, what are you talking about? How they enslave us? How do they enslave you as a white man? So in America, right? They use the courts and violence because slavery is making people do stuff they wouldn't do and forcing them to do it with violence, right? What kind of violence are they inflicting on you? Well, they use money because money is a debt contract backed by violence. So it's super simple. There's always more debt than money. You can never pay back the debt because there's so, always more debt, so right? Imagine, there's only five types of so, non-dischargeable debts that they will force you to pay with, enslave you with via violence in a court. And those are, so you, you know said, what those are, right? Those debts are? So that's making violence. Huh? So you just... You just pretend. No, it's not violence. Court. What happens if you don't pay this back? The police will come and use violence and put but you in this, cage. But they're not doing anything violent to you. What are you talking? So hold on. So if, is, I, this, if the police come, hold on. This is white supremacy one hundred and one, man. This is white supremacy one hundred and one. The violence to them is making them pay a bill. They look at that as violence. That's their violence. Okay. Making them have to pay a child support check is violence. Well, that's uh, there's only violence. five bills. They will use violence to make you pay, okay. and if you don't do it, they'll okay. throw you in jail, right? They don't. They don't use systematic violence against white dudes, man. Uh, Making you pay a bill. They use it against that's everyone, not, but whites seem to beat it that, better. I agree, but they're not having kids. But the five debts that, that they use violence—that's that's something white now say so. No, I was just gonna say the five debts. It's a portion of taxes. Federally backed okay. okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to let a white supremacist sit here and lie to y'all, man. I just wanted to, you know, yeah, yeah. just to show you that I'm white and I say so narrative. Oh, Lord. Wow. These people, boy. Let me get one last call. Let me get my brother Mikhail. 
I know he has something to say about what they were talking about building in Africa. My brother is very well versed on what they're doing over there. Brother Mikhail, let us know what's really happening with the infrastructure and the plans over there to build communities in Africa, brother. Great minister of code. My, I am so good, brother. How are you? Just uh, enjoying the uh, the Barnum and Bailey uh, <laughs> variety show. <laughs> Jeez. Man, man, man. Oh, boy. Okay. Yuck. Let me unpack this in less than two minutes. First of all, mm. Pan African, especially uh, in the coming. Oh, man, you're breaking up, brother. Ah, brother. Ah, you're breaking up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a brother's phone. The reception is bad. And I really wanted him to speak on that. Okay. Um, all right, let me, let me, okay, I'm going to get him next time. I mean, let me close it out because I've been on here for, oh, Lord, been on almost three hours. So let me shut it down. Everybody go to rally, the number four, reparations.com. Get my top five a nice booties. I wanna set the move on wide R and B grooves. Rock topless when we cruise